I wrote in, a poem my... for you. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Everyone, we gotta get our snaps ready. You know, okay. snaps to kind of like, instead of applying, we have to snap for us. Okay. We're ready for okay. the poem. <clears throat> yeah. Leg so hot. Hot, hot leg. Leg so hot, you can fry an egg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good poem, streamer. Thank you. <laughs> but everybody, are you excited for another exciting episode of the Rutgers? Finally! Yay! Yippee! Yay! It's time for another exciting episode of the Rot Goons. Where last you all left off, you all dealt with a big parade. A huge parade, a whole bunch of stuff that basically happened. Like you you outsold everything in the cart. You basically met Curdinand, the head of the Conservants, and you met up with a potato mancer or so. A very depressed young boy. That, <laughs> that, that potato mancer character. saved our butt. <laughs> yeah, the, he, he came in clutch, like without him, you know. Uh, until you secured that deal, you almost picked up a rock and murdered a guy, like an elf selling wine <laughs> and beer and everything. Like the whole parade was a massive event. And you also yeah, helped try it. to save as many people as possible during the terrifying bug explosion come out of people's mouths type event. And notice that there might be something afoot of people who are rot infested uh, trying to do certain things. But. You guys are back, and I want to reintroduce all the amazing players here who bring you Rock Goons, starting off with Minerva. Hello, I'm Minerva, aka Party Demoness. I am a giant problem over on Twitch.tv and Twitter. I'd love to see you there. I do art and stuff. Uh, I play Grey Crocus, the Null Ranger. Okay, and next up, we have the Ever Ghostly Cabal. Hello, my name is Cabal. I am your uh, horror host here over on Twitch. I'm also an artist, voice actor, and a variety streamer. Um, and I am playing Talim Shabura, the Ghost Magus. I could be a variety streamer when all you've been playing is Armored Core. <laughs> I have not only been. <laughs> I mean, there's some dark and darker. Well, there's a yeah. in there, there's man. dark and darker in there too. <laughs> when you can play dark and darker with me again, Zor. When you gonna fire a fireball at me? We can talk to people <laughs> in that game now. Oh my God! Did they implement that? You can yep. fucking talk. <laughs> yep. I got a whole content plan around that. Oh no! Oh my god! That's so good! Of course, next up we have our resonant little guy, Froggy Lock. Good time zone, everybody! Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Uh, I'm Froggy Lock. I'm a professional artist and live duty rigger and a variety streamer here on Twitch, but you can find me on all sorts of social media platforms under the same handle today! I will be playing Beatles above the level six Cobalt Investigator. And of course, next that we have the ever stalwart and talented uh, Salty Job. That's me, everyone. My name is Salty Job. I play Heart, and he's a big boy. He punches things, he slaps things, he cooks you food, and he's a level six monk on the side. God, I wish he'd slap me. <laughs> God, I wish that was me. God, God I damn! Wish I wish you'd slap it, then cook me. You know what I'm saying? Right, get no, please so explain. That he cooks you? I hope he slaps <laughs> me so fast and hard it cooks me alive. You ever seen that video of someone trying to see if you can cook a chicken by slapping it really hard a lot of times? <laughs> yes, yes. Didn't they determine? Didn't they determine that you need to like slap something like two thousand like miles an hour or some shit to like? Yeah, you gotta slap, slap the it. fuck out of it yeah. for a long Heart ass time. Heart can do it. It's just oh, you're just, you're you're just do cooking it. you alive. You can do it because he can actually heat up his hands. We that just put she... we just put Froggy on the end of a very long pole and spin it around in a circle until she the cold pole, pole right. turns for the okay. grill. So so we're moving further away from what I originally wanted. Uh, sorry, who are you? Hi, I am your host <laughs> and game master for this evening. I am Zorn the Bear, your wizardly host host for today, and to start off the adventure and also just to remind folks of basically what they are in case everybody's new or anything else like that um if you ever notice these bars uh, we call them we call them hp bars not for hit points but hero points and hero points you base they the players here get to re-roll a d20 result and since i kind of 
uh, short up the intro at the very beginning there. Uh, normally, sometimes I just let the adventurers uh, recap the story. Uh, but just to shorten the episode up uh, for today, because we kind of went came in a little bit late. Um, what I'm going to do is make sure everyone at least has one hero point. So, Hart, you have zero right now. You get one. And if players want to help um, the players get hero points, any bit donations that you do, if you do hashtag the character's name, which are all kind of down there for you uh, below each player, you can help them get more hero points. So if you ever want to help them with a roll or just, just generally help them get up and stuff, um, it is very, very useful. Of course, there's more rolls of hero points, but that's the main thing you need to worry about. And of course, my bar are villain points. So just a, a percentage of what you send, the total of that, I don't take whatever from it, but a percentage of it gets sent to me so I can roll and mess up the players. So with that, everybody, are we ready to continue on and start the adventure today? Yeah. Right. I yeah. Have, I have one question for you, Zorin. You uh -oh. said they're villain points. Yes. Are you a villain or are you a super villain? Dum, bum, ba. No, these are for <laughs> the villains in the story, or else every busy you meet will be a villain. <laughs> you like brother, you'd be like, secretly, I'm here to kill you. <laughs> it's no! like, I'm here to I knew it. Pl oh, spoiler oh, alert, no! by the way. The cat is actually a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Combative DM, we've got a combative DM. Hot style DM, hot style. But can't believe the cat's a bomb. <laughs> they shut us up the cat bomb. But we will now continue back. You guys, uh, you guys have recently left. Um, or basically completed the parade, and you're out of your way. Um. You probably have packed up. You have received your invite from Curdenand, <gasps> and you That's are, right. and you are. Well, I have to ask you the question. There's two things you can do from here. You can either uh, return back to the Elmas. You can either return back to the Elmas and retrieve your earnings. Like you have completed the Elmas job, uh, which your job, as a recap for folks who may have forgotten, uh, it was their job to basically assemble all of these ingredients, all these various stuff, get a sort of shopping cart, food cart thing together and attend this parade to make a lot of money. And you guys did. Like, you haven't been able to, sorry, you haven't really been able to sit down and count all the money yet, but you know, you made a lot of, lot of dough. <laughs> so you might expect you wanna hand over your money bag over to the Almas when, when you can. But <clears throat> you do have that invite for Curtinan and you do know that it's it's fairly soon, so what would you guys like to do? So the it, sorry for clarity, uh, it's soon, but we have time to you, go to the Elmas first. You know, you will have time to go talk to the okay. Elmas and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Going to going to talk to the Elmas and getting that squared away because of the uh, the hole in the roof situation. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what Beetle would suggest first thing. You hold up all their money. And be like, let's go turn in our quest. <laughs> Grace just like, a I quest? I, I thought forgot. we were just in debt. <laughs> I forgot about the hole in the roof. <laughs> what do you mean you forgot? You caused it. I wasn't conscious when I caused it. <laughs> I wasn't can myself. I, can I go? Can a ghost be unconscious? <laughs> I'm sending. This the semi extra planar state. <laughs> Your ghost CP. Yeah. Ghost Every new like, problem is just a prop for a quest, and we've embarked and completed. So let's go back to the Elmas and then let's go get cured by Kurnanand. I can't wait for him to make those crystals leave us alone. I too would like to stop having, you know, traumatic visions. That'd be great. I just don't I, like when the rock is on me. It's gross. I don't. Bug. I don't know what is bad about me. I think I'm pretty okay. What? Huh? Yeah. What? What do you mean cure? Like make the thing go away? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Our oh, yeah. condition. Our condition. Our status. Our state of being haunted by a rock. A geode. Geoditis is what I think I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna write a book. <laughs> 
Greg is just it. like, yeah, I'd like to stop having traumatic visions. And Talim is just like standing in the background. <laughs> it's a thousand yard stare. <laughs> you can hear Fortunate Sun starting to well up in the back. <laughs> the re zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Problem is the whole reason I'm stuck in this plane of existence. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you all like to do? We go to the Elmas. Yeah, yeah, we're going yeah. the Elmas. I going. think it's unanimous. We go to the Elmas. Bring we're going to Beetle Boy with us? Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. Brug's coming with y'all. Yeah. yeah. We bring Brug, we bring Greg, we bring all our the money, we bring our cart. We just. You're bringing Greg with you, making sure he's coming with you? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. We did. We did tell him that we would get him a place. Okay. Yeah. But I have to. Uh, I might have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just bring him along. He, you know he's gonna say something about you know letting the wizard know. But yeah. you feel he the wizard doesn't really need to know. He can just go missing. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So <laughs> as you now bring every him there, good business venture starts off with faking your death. <laughs> no, oh, is that how dead. it works? <laughs> is that what you tried doing? Oh, <laughs> glares at Beetle. <laughs> Ray just Ray, Ray grabs Beetle's snout and just collapses. <laughs> Stop. That actually is a good fucking question for to leave. <laughs> if you fake your death, but it actually happened. <laughs> yeah. I'll do this and I'll pretend I'm dead. Uh. <laughs> I want you to know, Kaleem has modified his shield so he can throw it. <laughs> you will the throwing distance right now. The, the wagon ain't that big. <laughs> he will Captain America your ass. You got to be careful. Beetle's muzzled. So, so you as a party are continuing on to the Queen's Palaster. And as you begin to journey on back over to the Pond's Palaster. Um, it definitely does take a good bit of time because uh, you are trying to navigate through the city. We go through its major highways that kind of help move all these traffic. Hart, you're pulling the cart, right? Oh. And as you all are walking along, Greg, the potato mancer. Um, in fact, what I'll try to do, I actually bring up uh, this fantastic piece of art from Piketty. Uh, Piketty has been doing fantastic uh, art pieces of art. And Piketty hey. did wonderful stuff for the potato mancer. <laughs> He did a wonderful piece. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Such a such a wonderful lad. Look at him. <laughs> we love it. He's a boy. A, a boy. So Greg will look at you all as he's kind of riding on this cart with everybody. And you're like, so um, so who are you all? What what are you doing here? <laughs> he signed up with you all, but he hasn't really met you all yet. <laughs> Yeah, so he's, he's trying to figure it out. He was like, hey, um, so what are you? Are you guys like I'm friends? Or? Yeah, we're best friends. Yeah, that's my little bro. That's my big bro. That's mama. And that's the leap. Great. Great. like crosses his arm and looks at Greg and he's just like, he's just like, I prefer the term adventure capitalists. Hmm. <laughs> So, so Gray is now like, she's kind of like fine tuning her crossbow. She definitely did not have this on her while she was at you know, the parade. Uh, so like, she's just kind of got this big honking crossbow out of nowhere. She's still like, you know, wearing her nice dress and everything. She's just kind of looking over it and like fine tuning it. And she's like, oh, you could you could say we get around and you know, we do stuff for people. It's pretty okay. I what, guess. Kind of, yeah. what kind of stuff for people? I've like, killed people. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> you know, somebody needs their gutters cleaned. Uh, 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 there's a or their guts hole, cleaned or their guts cleaned. There's oh. a big hole in the ceiling at the place we're going. We're going to fill that. Somebody you know, needs to find a lost artifact. Yeah, yeah. That's, and then we find it. You know, we. this is the power truly of being a famous adventurer. Yeah, and we're pretty interested in Delvers. Delving is pretty interesting. We haven't, we, we are in Delvers, but we've delved. We've definitely delved. So. We're also cooks. So y'all, you're cooks? But yeah. yeah. What, well, or well, chefs. You? We oh. are professionals. <laughs> well, what aren't you? Not Rain. cursed. 
We are not policemen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the cops. <laughs> all of you roll me a diplomacy if you don't mind. Oh no. I'll see how Greg <laughs> feels yeah. about all of you. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. See if he does not regret his uh abandonment. That's a four. That's a nat twenty. Well, a I rolled a nat twenty. Hey! I rolled, I rolled a twelve a... for a total of uh twenty. Yeah, I rolled uh, a nineteen total for a total 50. twenty twenty one. Well. Thank goodness, out of after Beatles flub, that everybody else came in with roaring, you know, persuasion. And uh, Greg will basically like, oh, you guys are pretty cool. Thanks. You're pretty cool too. You're pretty cool. I'm not. I wish cool. I could make. What I wish I could about? make potatoes. What are you talking about? It's heart, really... puts, heart, heart stops the cart, turns around, he points at him. over abruptly. Po po <laughs> points at. Greg and goes, Greg, hear me out. You're pretty cool. You're a wizard. That means that you can break the rules of reality and no one can tell you no. There's such things as rules and there are such things as people who enforce those rules. But according to my father, whom I do a lot of things to impress and who I dearly love and who dearly loves me back, surely, I'm fairly a certain. <laughs> and he points at Greg at, with like passion in his eyes. A wizard is the most feared entity on this earth. You should command that fear, Greg. You are pow powerful to your core. You just haven't learned how to express it yet, other than create potatoes, which is still cool. Itch. Oh. You can spawn infinite food, and that's pretty sick. Yeah. You have to, mm, yeah? What about it? I wanted to be like a cool wizard and like do fireballs and stuff. Set the potatoes on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like to, to, to leave like, like, uh, it comes over on Greg's shoulders, like, yes, but with the power of money, you can cast as many fireballs as you want. Yeah. And through potatoes, you can acquire money. Yeah. Listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. Look, he's a ghost, a wizard, and a warrior, a craftsman, a capitalist. This man is a power, more more diverse of a portfolio you will never find, my dude. So, if anything, talk to him. This man has created so many things. And, and there are two old ladies that we're going to see. Two more Mimas, and you're really going to like them. They're also really good with the magic stuff. Yeah, oh. they can they can turn people into frogs. Oh. Yeah, Beetle pulls out a frog sandwich and takes a big bite of it. Oh, he really freaks <laughs> out a little bit. You can tell he's now way nervous here. <laughs> Where did you even get that? Speak with don't 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 speak with your mouth full, dear. Come on, you know better. So <laughs> Keep on walking. <laughs> Keep on pulling cards. Greg is having a potentially mixed thoughts, but he's pretty on board with all of you. And it's his it's his first late <laughs> it's his first young adult rebellion. And um and as you guys are continuing on, Brug, as you guys are continuing on, you're making your way past the highways of the squat of the squires pilaster, and you're nearly getting to the pond splasher after several times chit chatting here and there. Uh, Brog will then ask you all, um, like, hey, um, well, once you complete this job and and talk to Kurt and Anna, what are you all gonna do? You're gonna come along, right? I mean, if <laughs> if Kurt and Anna allows, I, I I don't know what I really need to, I don't know what I'm needed for, really. Well, you're a part of our group, so what do you invite all of us? I mean, you were helping as much as us. You were just escorting people out safely. So I, I think that Kurt did, didn't see that, but you should definitely come and be recognized as well. Yeah, Maybe. but I, you know, I have to take care of my daughter and I don't want the Almas to be burdened with her. Well, maybe you could cure your daughter. Like, yeah. It's like, I can, hmm. It's like, he, he kind of ponders a bit going, my experience of being indebted to somebody has always caused me to get more trouble than it's worth. 
So I'm uh, I'm very wary. Our it's okay names. to be wary. Wait, do we have to pay Curtinan for for the blessings? It's like no, but normally when someone does something for free, they expect something out of you. What? Like Talene oh. kind of like points a finger at Brug and is like, he's right, you know. <laughs> what? Nothing well, in this world is free, Beetle. Well, why didn't you say this earlier before we started doing all this so we could go see Kurt and Ann to get the rocks to leave us alone? I mean, it's not like he's going to demand payment immediately. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Talene. Oh, oh no, it's uh, Leo. It, it's uh, as like Brug says that Talene is just like, exactly. And at this point, we don't have much of a choice. Unless we want to continue to be haunted by whatever force is possessing these crystals. I'd like to stop seeing things, thanks. Uh, me too, but I can't think of... I, I can't even think of what Kurdan would ask from us. We're adventurers. Uh, it could be anything. Let's just... I guess... I guess we'll just... We could bring it up at the dinner and be, be, uh, very casually. Talib could do it. Talib is very good at, uh, uh, is bartering the right word? You could be like, trade offer, you, uh, cure our stones, uh, we do <laughs> lawn. <laughs> please, please never say cure our stones ever again. <laughs> Yeah, you can just polish the bad juju yeah. right out of these stones for us. We'd appreciate it. If you want to take the stones out of us, then we can uh, trim your bushes or something outside. Why do you keep making it worse? <laughs> <laughs> this is my talent. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? It's my skill. Grace is gonna go back to quietly taking care of her crossbow. We go from like delvers and adventurers, just like topiary experts. <laughs> it's like, oh, how do you end your days? Oh, you know, I just I made a giraffe out of a bush. You know, pretty great. Pays all right. Beetle Not and I also, anymore. Circles. And I also killed five guys. <laughs> and five guys. <laughs> they, and five guys. <laughs> My big guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Brug will ask you all again, going like, well, like, even if you, you know, get your blessings and all that other stuff, regardless, like, after it's all done, what do you, what do you plan to do? Oh, flip. Well, with the, you know, assistance of our newfound business partner, Greg here, I have a few ventures that I would like to set up that I could see being quite profitable and we would yeah. need uh, individuals who are capable of organizing men of stout stature if you would be interested in such a position Brog you know it is no longer something of force or combat it is something I would think would perhaps be a more relaxing lifestyle <laughs> well I'll definitely be interested I know that a uh, croc would definitely try to wiggle his way into all your operations, so at least my knowledge of the gang will help out. Try to keep oh. him off your tail, so to speak. And oh, that mean, like taps his head and is like, and that's why I like you. Always it's a man of action and thought. Yeah. Originally, I was going to keep wandering and traveling, but I, uh, I think I've gotten a bit attached to these knuck these knuckleheads, so. <laughs> I think I'll stick around for a bit. Grandma's not gonna leave. Yeah, <laughs> Grandma's yeah. not gonna abandon us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I assumed we were all gonna stay together, and we were interested in, you know, Talib's talking about the business, but uh, delving. We could look into delving. I want to delve more. Delving is fun and scary, but fun when it's not scary. And maybe the Elmas will have more we can help out with, and we can keep staying there. Mm. I just want to stay with you guys so far. I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> His lip quivers. He pulls out the, the frog sandwich again, takes a big bite. <laughs> I still don't know where you got that. Greg cringes. <laughs> so, so with that, Greg kind of nods. Um, and you guys continue on to the pond's palaster and finally make your way back 
to Elma's. Been quite a while yeah. since you guys have been here. So let me activate here. There you are. Let me find Greg's token. Yippee! <laughs> He's too scared to leave the card. He's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. They me to a frog. It he's gonna me. he's gonna try and run away as soon as they're not looking. <laughs> they're gonna eat me. <laughs> they're, they're, they're gonna eat them. Now they're gonna eat me. Oh my, oh god. my god! But so they're, not gonna be like, they're not oh, trolls. Ahead, they're not trolls. But you guys arrive back at the Almas Tavern. Feel free to move around if you'd like. But uh, you notice obviously the lights are on, and from uh, the peaks inside the windows, you do know notice people are inside. Well, in that case, I think uh, Beetle will take their earnings, but he'll suggest that why don't we bring things in through the back so that customers don't see us coming in with um, and he points at their big bag of change. <laughs> you know what? You actually have a good point. Yeah. Kaleem points at Beetle is like, now you're using that brain. What do you mean now? All right, we'll Anyways, meet you inside. Anyways, around to the back. <laughs> Grail hop off the cart and just like grab Greg by his scruff and just kind of drag him what? a little bit. That's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Greg's just like, and Talim is like, it's like, don't worry, follow Gray. It's <laughs> like a freaking hostage. <laughs> All right, so Mio will start unloading the cart, bringing the money in, any leftover supplies, okay. yada yada yada. Hey, yeah, feel free to move you all, all your tokens inside the kitchen. All right. Does it make it a bit easier for us all so you don't have to RP walk during the entire thing? Oh, I love colliding you. with walls. Here, I'll, I'll I love it. Out. Hold up. I'll help everybody out one second here. I'll move. I made it. Yeah, I'll get you, Beetle. There you go. Makes me picture just like Gmod walking or like default walking, but you're just walking into the wall and there's collision sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, rattling it's, it's so not like walking, it's like VR chat walking where. Yeah. Yes, you yes. just like slide around your feet are stationary yes exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> so as all right. you all are coming in back uh, through the kitchen after you've unloaded everything yeah awesome. yes. as you enter inside the tavern i'll easily move everybody just to make it easier um as you enter inside the tavern you see all of everyone you've nearly kind of engaged with so far, all they're waiting. You see the Alma's there, manning the bar. You see it's very light here or so, but you see Holic enjoying a lovely tea at the bar. You see Lorne uh, also just kind of playing with the kitten, which you know uh, to be Isthel uh, Thalia or so, which is Brug's daughter. In so cute. <laughs> and I you can't see Vina. Lorne became a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> you see Vina basically cleaning tables and things like that in cups. Baron stack wall over at one of the tables talking with this weird inanimate bear looking thing which you guys have <laughs> met before uh during some one random excursion at a masquerade thing or with something and then you see tugbert the business platypus sitting also at the table and nuggets just kind of going like way too innocent the dog is way <laughs> too interested in this little guy but they all look to you and they all cheer you know, they're, they're all like, they have returned! Yippee! You just they're hear not them all dead. clap. They, they look at Talim and it's just like, they most of them are dead. <laughs> like, they're all so happy to see you again. You know, heart, heart poses and goes, Did you know that so many people died over there? It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you hear Lauren say? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great, great. Jilly drags her paw down her face. She's like, no. <laughs> so many people just started spewing up bugs or spiders, specifically spiders and uh, and flies, rot flies. OK, that did happen. But more importantly, we're alive and we were really successful at the parade. It was great. <laughs> Uh, like good job good job you group yeah come here let me get you around to some the drink and celebration and oh and put the money bag on the bar i want to uh, count the earnings beetle scampers back into the kitchen where they left the money bag <laughs> the money bag is gone <laughs> <laughs> 
You see Holic <laughs> and then we'll give you guys some room. Gray's gonna slump over out of, out of seat. She's just like collapses. <laughs> She's like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm <laughs> well, you guys didn't have to get up. We could have sat in your laps or something. And Grandma's like, Holly tired. Goes, oh dear. <laughs> no. I don't Not think that would be horse. acceptable. Uh, <laughs> Gray. My horses. Yeah. <laughs> Gray, Gray, Gray will like lift her arm very lazily and like do like a, a jutting thumb point behind her to Greg. He's like, oh yeah, we we got a new kid. Makes That's potatoes. Great. Magic. Greg. Greg will sheepishly wave. <laughs> and not really... was like standing but is floating behind Beetle was like rubbing his hands together like looking at like Elva at Elva is just like <laughs> nodding he's just like yeah he's so it's greedily like, do the merchant it, hands and just it, be it's, all it's like, the, it, yeah. like he's doing like the Jack Nicholson like smile and nod <laughs> <laughs> yes they, they understand and they understand your merchant language like <laughs> you know they're just oh my God. You hear, as you hear Halma cackling, oh, <laughs> I heard there was uh, quite a stir over there doing the parade. I uh, understand that there was a group of individuals at Alma's cart who helped save several people. Uh, it's all over the prince. <gasps> it is! Oh. <laughs> Well, good thing not a lot of people notice exactly what you look like due to your emotions to your costumes attire. That is good. Oh, yeah, we could have gone to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, it's good. It's a good thing that you arrived safe and sound. Now, the money, please. The money. Oh, uh, yeah. And Beetle reaches around to his fanny pack where he's tied the money to it. And it was dragging along the floor like he couldn't fit. And he just, like, unties it and thumps it down on top of the counter. He's like, <laughs> now let's see. And you see that she'll open it up for a second and then close it again. And go, hmm, <laughs> that's quite a lot of math of moolah. <laughs> That's why we brought it around back. We didn't know if, you know. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing you thought of that way, dearie. And she pats you on the head. <laughs> good dog. <laughs> it's a, so let's see now. Uh, from what I understand that uh, you still owe us for the repairs of the roof. So, and she kind of starts taking <laughs> stacks of coins out and starts laying them in. And she'll... Lee was like all excited and rubbing his hands. And as she <laughs> says that, he just kind of like... He stops rubbing his hands and he looks down at them and he's like, <laughs> Does it, Is it that he turns around and goes, Huh? <laughs> I'm imagining Talim like deflating as each stack is taken out of the, uh, the massive pile. <laughs> the light yeah, disappears from his eyes. Take those out of count. Take those out of Talim's pay because Talim made the hole in the, the ceiling. Oh, okay, dearie. Mm, and then he starts sliding things around. <laughs> And you'll see oh. that she starts doing all these stacks and she'll twirl her wand or so. And you see all this money flowing from this bag. You collected a large amount of money because you sold everything. Yippee. It's a lot of gold. We're talking Yippee. huge amounts, about 3,000 something gold in there. And she announces to you all. And she goes, oh, that's such a lovely score. Thank you all so very much, dearies. Now, uh, as promised, um, Here's your section. Here's a, in a little bit of a bonus. Um, it's 1,500 gold for all of you. And what? and she'll look at it, but there is the matter of the roof, and she slides a chunk of money away. And then, <laughs> oh, and unfortunately, we had to sell several horses to Harlick and such, and also for the cart and things of such, and da da da, and all these expenses and management fees, and also getting the title fees, and da da da. <laughs> and she starts the, the entire the time to leave, he's got like like every time she brings a feet like he like raises a finger and he's like uh, <laughs> and he like slowly lowers it <laughs> do we all have, do we all have feet to like to Lorne for bringing Talim back uh, Lorne, Lorne goes no no that's fine that's free of charge I mean it's like, you he doesn't need to breathe, but he breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> Even though it cost me about three diamonds for the spell and all the other stuff. And then just, uh, like, you are very expensive, but I think the roof damage is good enough. And uh, of course, things happen. And, uh, and, and she starts going for it and she slides over uh, all of your money. You all gain 
around 1300 gold not each yeah, not me. each just total for all of you um so not each of you add it like it's for the whole party you get that much so uh you all get 1300 gold after all of it so you, we can add that to the party loot that's about 325 of a pop yeah 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 Beetle is elated yeah. So after That's all the deductions cool. and everything else, and you see Thelma will um, hand you all various drinks and she'll wink to you, Talene, because knowing that she can at least serve you something, <laughs> and she got you a lovely Quanshear drink or Quanshear wine. Aww. Yay. Uh, so you could actually do something with it. And <laughs> like Talene like picks it up and he's just like, yippee. <laughs> <laughs> Grail kind of like look over her shoulder to Talim. She's like bringing up her drink and stuff. She's like, listen, it was still a net positive. It could have been way worse. I guess I have plenty of time to make or. <laughs> what she said? Us. That's such good pay. Yeah. I feel like just said. So for context, um, that the amount of money you would have in your pocket, at least for for you, you're doing pretty well. Just, you are you're gonna be more well off than anybody in the ponds palaster like oh, you're yeah. rolling in it like that that's a good chunk of it. Yeah. you're not gonna be able to go to like the queen's palaster and start doing the high roller games for long that's a good chunk of change but it they, could have been more this <laughs> is uh this is start uh, le- uh start buying property and become landlord level <laughs> Oh no, we'll be villains for sure then. But T- T- yeah, but... lost a lot of money to the Elvis, <laughs> so he's sad about it. <laughs> yeah. Hart would never be a landlord. He claims land on his own. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Could, would Talim be able to be like a ghost squatter if you haunted a house and kept oh people away? God. And then after like some random law that if you stay there for a certain amount of time, it's yours? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a business <laughs> We'd, we'd have do. to. We'd have to look at me. Oh my God. Maybe that's an entire racket. You know, like there are, you know, like Cindy and Undead in, in, uh, in Outset. That's the that, Squatter Skilled? We could, we could make that an entire one shot thing instead of ghosts, like our own Ghostbusters. So it's ghost swatters and you're going around evicting ghosts for not paying rent in haunted houses. <laughs> Yeah, like Im- 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 imagine if you will, a really old like baron or something in a quarter of uh, like in one of the many districts of outset. They die. No one is uh, fi- like everyone is figuring out who is actually going to own this estate when they die and everything within it. But their ghost is there, and when they are <laughs> and when they are done with figuring out who is supposed to earn everything, the ghost has already started to haunt the house. <laughs> the ghost is like, I'm still here. This is my house. <laughs> this is mine. So Halloween special, yeah? Yeah. Oh I, 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 yeah. I would actually do that as a one-shot bit. We can. If we really want to do something like that, we can do it like a Patreon exclusive or something. I we actually, are all on beds. I actually like that idea of just doing like, let's just do some temp dudes. Uh, but <laughs> that would be funny. But, but. As, you guys, as you guys all come in, like uh, Baron Stockwell comes up like, hey, you remember me? I am Baron. Hi, Baron. Oh, Hi, Baron. Oh, it's so good to see you all. Oh. Like, it's like, well, so I, good to see you too, but we we can't stay very long because look, we've got this. And a Beetle reaches into his shirt and pulls out the letter, the invitation that they got, and slaps it on the bar. Oh, and just like everyone kind of like looks at it and so like, oh, I don't know, what's that thing? It's from Cardinand. Cardinand, Cardinand who? Cardinand, the guy who's made out of rocks and he can cure people and he's gonna cure us of our rocks. Aaron blinks <laughs> one eye and then the other. <laughs> <laughs> Big we important guy. He just looks down at Baron and it's just like, it's okay. It, 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 you'll get used to it, maybe. Probably not. We have a condition. Beetle puts his hands together like he's praying and points them at Baron. <laughs> Is it your personality? What? <laughs> <laughs> 
Gray is sinking in her seat. Gray is sinking in her seat. Gray is sinking in her seat. Beetle there, is taken aback. The, the origin of that joke is, uh, oh God, what was it? Um, this when someone comes up, you say, I love your personality. And they look at you saying, oh, thanks. It's a disorder. <laughs> I, oh my god. I tried to morph that. It didn't work well. Uh, regardless. I do, I, that's debatable. <laughs> uh, Baron will look at you like, no, no, at least kind of steal it. We all assembled here together to celebrate your success a little bit. You know? Oh, oh thank you. Because you want to help us out in some way, shape, or form. And Holly yeah. leans over you. Yes, without you, they would have found me. But you've uh, given me a lovely home. And as a no, and I forgot to mention when you're going through the back, uh, the storage room in the back has now fully been renovated. I haven't changed the map yet, but it's been yeah. fully mm -hmm. renovated, basically be like a bit of storage in on one side and a full alchemist setup. <laughs> and like, we're talking like Breaking Bad sort of oh levels God. of making oh potions. My like, God. Hulk is going to town in the back of the Elmas right now. And, um, and you see that he will procure you all uh, several health potions he'll put on the bar. And I'll add it to you guys' <gasps> inventory. So do I made all of these for you. The very oh, potent. What? And they have my special ingredients in there. They help just you a little bit more. And especially for you. And he points you to Liam. Um, and he'll go, these will also work on you. <laughs> I had to go find someone else who's very ghostly and do some experiments, and I think they've came to a lovely success. Talim will, uh, when he gets handed the vials, or actually, um, like, hold them up, and he's like, I would actually be quite interested if we could discuss it later. Absolutely, here. He, I mean, he'll, he'll pass over, uh, or he'll just kind of pass one up before you're going, give it a try. <laughs> Didn't have to do all of this, buddy. Yeah, this like, is so nice of you. Lauren will pipe up. I, and we all sort of took a discussion that you have all been very helpful to basically everyone here. Um, you helped out the Elmers not only with this, but with various, um, various situations, especially remember that time when everyone was here and started causing a ruckus. We all watched the entire time. You expertly were able to, to calm everyone down and get everyone out. So nice of you guys. It's very it's kind really of nice you. Of everybody. Beetle, are you crying? No. <laughs> I gotta okay. pee. <laughs> <laughs> bro, uh, bro, goes down without any of you. Uh, you know, I would have lost my daughter here, and and um, yeah, we wouldn't really be here without you all. And, <laughs> <laughs> Just sobbing in the kitchen. So <laughs> they will actually move up and take Beetle's seat. <laughs> like, well, he's not going to need this for a little bit. He's gonna like just tilt back her drink and just kind of like, listen, no one deserves to lose their kid. I was not gonna let that happen. Uh, Brug nods, and I think, and everyone will. The Elma, Elma, and Thelma have been procuring drinks for everybody, and they all kind of. Uh, lift up and Baron will call for you. Be able to go, like, wait, Beetle, stop having a help, stop having a bunch of a breakdown and come be celebrated. Ah, I'm not having an emotional breakdown. I had to pee. Are you, are you, still, are you peeing from your eyes? Uh, <laughs> no, he's still holding his tanker and he takes a drink. <laughs> Gray like, is gonna, <laughs> Gray, Gray's gonna reach over and grab Beetle and just like plop him in her lap and just pat him. Uh. So what everyone will do, like Baron will go, everyone, a toast, the heart beat up to Liam and Gray, the ones who sold everything from the cart today. Yippee! When he goes to toast, he just throws the whole tankard into the air. <laughs> everything splashes. <laughs> yeah. Gray is now soaked. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes like clattering just onto the floor. through to Liam and he just looks at Beetle, just... Beetle does a little, he's doing a little dance in his seat. He's really pent up in the excitement. He's wall-eyed. His eyes are going in different directions. His mouth is as far open as possible. He's wiggling. <laughs> he's wiggling. He's wiggling. The he's avatar wiggling. of ADHD has descended upon us. <laughs> he's happy. He's an avatar of happy. 
penis. He's uh, stimming. The beetle. <laughs> No, he's I a can't believe Beetle's audio stealing. <laughs> no, he is a prism through which every hue of joy can be witnessed as he wiggles and waves his arm and the cup is somewhere on the floor behind him and it's all wet and yeah. he's dancing. He's a little guy. And Gray is soaked, I'm sorry. Gray, gray is soaked. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of just accepts his fate and just kind of stares in the distance. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, with that, you guys are at this point, everyone's celebrating, patting you on the back, you know, Venus helping out, you know, serve any other drinks and stuff. And uh, you see that she's very happy instead of being a nervous wreck. She seems a lot calmer and happier today. Um, oh, nice. Enjoying stuff. The bears is talking stuff with Tugbert and Hollick is just sipping on tea. Greg is just slowly sipping on something else as well. He's like, Bleh! and keeps sipping it. Uh, <laughs> you know, everyone's having a good time. What is so, this? It's vodka. It's made with potato. No. <laughs> oh my god. So if you want to establish anything with anybody or talk to any NPCs, um, if anybody wants to talk to someone or ask any questions, be curious about something, now is probably a good time. Okay, so I'm who's fucking dying. <laughs> oh, what? Put death flag huh? on this person. You can't you can, you can say this is the time when you're supposed to talk to people. Oh. After all the good things happen, we celebrate, everything is nice, and you go, This is what you should be talking to people. It's like, I, Soren, who's edge? dying? Yeah. Who's dying? Who's dying, Soren? Ha ha. It's me! For the third to? time! <laughs> oh, God! Who you guys want to talk to? Um, Talim will definitely want to be talking to the, uh, to, to the Elmas. Um, about the uh about the potato related business venture and uh greg's role in it and uh brug's potential role in it um you see uh, uh halma will will sign up to you going like i i see you brought yourself a little um potato boy um <laughs> who, uh, who is he and uh Talim will like uh, do the thing where like puts his his elbows on the counter and he, like uh steeples his fingers and he's like our route to great and continued profit and he'll like look over short he's like greg would you come here for a second and take a seat next to uh heart uh, uh okay you see greg will <laughs> hop over and take a little sit and um is a <laughs> and uh Talim will be like my dear Elmas, may I direct your attention to the miraculous ability of this young man? Greg, would you show them what you can do? Oh, uh, okay. And he got a the potato just, <laughs> just pops up in his hand and is instantly summoned. And he places it on the bar. And Helma just kind of goes, hmm. <laughs> He's like, and she, now do it again. And she <laughs> picks up the potato and starts looking at it. You know, her, her old wise and eyes are... Uh, glancing over and goes, oh, <laughs> I see why you brought this one. <laughs> yes. So we all know the current situation with uh, food here in Outset. And if you will notice, the quality of what Greg is able to produce is, well, notable. Not only that, but they are forever. They never disappear. It is quite the talent, if I have to say. And the lad here is interested in becoming a great and mighty wizard. And I've informed him that one of the ways to arcane mastery is, of course, through. And Talim like rubs his fingers together and like the universal symbol for money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gee. She'll look at. She'll look at Greg. Like, hmm. Yeah. I said, can you cast any other spells, boy? And and, Greg, and they'll kind of discuss it. Greg can't, and every spell he does um, <laughs> turns into summon potato, practically, or conjure potato. And and she goes, hmm, try to cast presentation on this cup. And he, he tries, and another potato pops up. <laughs> you know, and he goes, hmm, this boy is cursed. Oh, uh, wait, what? Indeed, you have a curse upon you. For every spell that you cast can only be 
this one. <gasps> I mean, oh. I consider it a blessing with how often he can do it. Indeed, Wait. but of course it's someone's decision to see if they wish to stay cursed or not. What are you... What do you want, Greg? Because we, we could take you with us and try and get you in to see Kurtnant. Tulip is like looking around rapidly and he's like, yeah, yeah, he's like wait, 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 Gray is still soaked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like Greg, like for the question of like, what would Greg want? Uh, Greg's like, well, seems a lot of people see the potatoes as a really cool thing, but I know one day I want to become a great and powerful wizard. They could do a whole bunch of stuff, but if I become a great and powerful wizard, maybe I can do this again i mean i won't forget how to do this right no you won't lose the ability it seems like this curse is very interesting um you could potentially learn how to do it again but but this and she holds the potatoes like this is i have not seen neither of us can do such magic and i have not seen a wizard be able to you know coddle such fine quality potatoes in all of our all of our lifetimes Greg, that's huge but it's up. It's your life. It's it's your life, and it's all about you, Greg. The world is your oyster. The world is your frog sandwich. Yeah. Greg what will look want? around, and he'll lock eyes with you, Talim. What does he see? <laughs> <laughs> Talim is just like he's looking at everybody, and like it, there is definitely like a panic in his posture, <laughs> and like when. <laughs> And to add to the panic, everyone else is going, yeah, just choose your own decision. You do what you want to do. Yeah, just follow your dreams, Greg. Yeah, don't let anyone take advantage of you. Yeah, yeah, just, just basically, <laughs> you know, yeah, just, just, yeah. just do what you want, man. You know, yeah. like, yes, you should pursue uh. your own dreams. And <laughs> Talib, like, when Greg looks over and locks eyes with him, Talib is just like, I would not be honest if I did not say there is quite a lot of money to be made with your current <laughs> ability. And I see the possibility as something great that could reach even farther beyond what a normal wizard might be able to achieve. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it is your choice. <laughs> your morals are dying. <laughs> Roll me a diplomacy. Oh, no. With, with, uh, if you, with fortune. So with fortune, you basically roll 2d20 to take the highest. It's like advantage. Okay. But this is a <laughs> fortuitous opportunity. Okay. I yeah. saw that one. Uh, yeah. One, two, twenty three. And so that's a total of a uh, 23 for what I rolled for diplomacy. Greg will look down at his drink, have that old anime protagonist flashbacks all through his life and what he's worth and da da da. And he will look up at you all and go, I think I'll. I think I will help Mr. Talim and you guys with how this potato stuff can go for now. And then later on, possibly in years after, I might I might change my mind and try to pursue myself to become a great and powerful wizard. And hey, if we do make a lot of money, then that means I could buy all the magic stuff I might need to help with my help with my dreams. I I don't have anything now, so I think this might be the best direction. Salim just falls. Salim just decompresses and falls flat on the bar. <laughs> he, he disperses and his helmet just falls onto the bar. He just <laughs> he's like a, he's like a piece of paper slowly drifting to the floor. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, Gray is gonna. Gray, when while they're all doing that, Gray's gonna like 
pap uh, heart on the shoulder. He's gonna like reach, reach over to Leem while he's on the ground and just like perishing. Uh, she's gonna, she's gonna pap heart on the shoulder. He's like, hey, hey, mm-hmm. I, I need to give you something. I need to give you something. Hey. Oh, oh, what is it? She, um, she. I wanted to do this earlier, but I didn't get to because we had to deal with the, the cart. She will pull yeah. out her necklace of like bone and teeth and like just various little bits and bobs. And she will take it off of her and take his hand and wrap it around his wrist. His we huge do this. ass wrist. Yes. <laughs> we do this with our children and those we hold dear. I have done this with all of my children. You are no different. <laughs> Stay safe, even when I'm not there. And then she'll just pat his hand and go back to what she's doing completely stone It's Gray! Gray is the one who's gonna die! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's the death plague! But... <laughs> so... Hey, Soren. Yes. Um... H- heart will... start to flicker where he stands, just slightly in that his body seems to vibrate Uh. and his eyes are just staring down at this and there is some memory he has of some kind of affection that he wanted so dearly in his past from someone uh, but never got it Uh, and now he gets it from another figure but it's that one thing he always wanted he wants uh, a sign of um of prideful longing he wants the sign of a parent literally just saying that they're proud of him and uh he is dumbfounded he can't answer so when uh, gray finishes this uh, he just looks down at it and his lower lip starts to quiver as uh, he just starts to cry. He doesn't sound, make any sounds. He just looks at it. Oh, you make a bitch cry in real life. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Do Did you they just love each other. Do it. Did you do just it. cast do it. daddy three. issues? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so sad. So, Can we get five gifted subs? So, 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 so does anyone uh, does anybody else want to do anything else? Yeah, I'd like to talk with uh sorry. Uh what was your name again? You mean the dwarf? Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm Ben! I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know you're Baron, you say it every time. So afterwards, we were talking about what we're gonna do. What do you think about delving? Could we could we like maybe come could come delving sometime to like check it oh, out? Oh, you don't want like, to we... delve, do you? Yeah, we wanna delve. Hey, well, the delve, you have to go and go to it at the delve to You can't just do it, you know. There are the folks who don't you don't really need much of a license to delve. But the guild helps support you and helps you find various locations via the sculptors and such and such. And I can bring you over to some of the offices and where you can get some gear, yeah. the ropes, all that. But delving is sort of like going down in the deep and dark caverns and dungeons. You won't be able to talk to a lot of people. And the folks you did find down there might either be friend or most likely foe. A lot of bad things happen down there. It's really dangerous. But we had a great time when we were going into the sinkhole. I have to have the camera pan to everybody else. <laughs> it just, did everyone else have a good time? Lima's <laughs> <laughs> doing like his common looking at Beetle like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Gray has entirely zoned out. She's not even listening. <laughs> Hard is still standing there uh, quietly crying. So, okay, well, I Right? You know, to each their own. You know, somebody's awful experience might be somebody's really, really great good time experience. And, and you know, maybe it's maybe it's my my lizard bones, but I, I yearn for the hole. I yearn for the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Context. I yearn.
prepared for the dark tunnels oh, underground. I think Yenfer Hall is deep, dark, and deep down below. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Man, to me yeah. a nugget. Yeah. Is it not yeah. right? Nugget, and he'll pet his basset hound companion. I would take a bullet for that dog. Me too. <laughs> that dog okay, is Okay, thanks. Yeah. When, we, when we get back from Curtain End, I'll, I'll come hit you up and we can, we can go and visit the, the guild and stuff. Absolutely. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Nugget. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pass it out. So, what, um, does anyone else want to talk to anybody else? Um, I mean, as far as like talking with Elmas and Thelmas, like Fleem expresses his interest as, um, expresses his, his interest in, um, like Brug kind of being like, because you're going to need people to load the potatoes in the sacks, carry stuff around, uh, stuff like that. And it's going to take multiple people, but he expresses his interest as Brug kind of being the, the overseer of all of that, you know, as a kind of like a guy leading from the front, um, and also, you know, like, Brug has his own wisdom with, you know, like, keeping yeah. others' fingers out of the business and stuff like that, so. Uh, Helma will lean over going, I don't know, uh, we can offer this, sweetheart. We can help you start the front once it's nice and ready. Help with some of the organization, and we can have Brug uh, help be the, uh, Help, help be the overseer of it while you're away for a little bit. And we can also help with a lot of the management. As you see, she mentions to her whole building, I think we have a good bit of management experience as long as you help us, uh, you know, with a percentage of it. Let's say about, you know, uh, about 70 30. Gleam, like, um, uh, looks at it and it's like, and this is after, you know, uh, all of the people involved, Greg, Brug, you know, the various employees have uh, had their cuts. Oh, Greg. that'll come out of your percentage. <sighs> <laughs> How about a 60-40? Then you split it so that each one of us points at Beetle, Gray, and Talim and himself get 10% each. I mean, that'll come out of your percentages and so we just want to make sure we get all end of the bargain you know just to make sure that uh with all of our housing and warehousing management finding the people guards all those things are compensated for so how 70 30 sounds and how about we reach a hand out to you talim and talim is like can we do 65 35 all right so heart roll me Wait. a diplomacy for out to your suggestion and talim roll me a diplomacy or if okay. you have anything related to money or merchantile, you can do that as well. I rolled a 16 there. for a total of uh, 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 25. And I rolled a 19 for a total of 23. All right, with those, they seem to be warming up to the deal a little bit and and uh, and tell me like, yeah, well, the other ones who found the boy and they're all gonna need a little bit extra money to make sure he's housed and stuff. So, hmm, you think, uh, Oh, you see that? That kind of like, look, dearie, just give them a little bit more. You know, they gotta put on their plate and manage all these goobers. <laughs> she points. Oh to yeah, herself. if I if I was strong enough, I would carry this entire place with me wherever <laughs> I would go. <laughs> and look at it like this: this is going to be a long-term investment, so there's going to be plenty of time to make plenty of money. Want to negotiate for anything better, or you go with where you're at? Uh, I think we're. Are you greedy? Be... Are you greedy, Cab? It's... It's... You do have hero points. <laughs> Chat can help yeah. by contributing more too to help you get secure this deal. So, I, uh, I, uh, watch us go through all this effort to secure this deal, and then we go to visit Kurnan, and something happens, and like everyone's dead, and this is complete. <laughs> 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 Yes, yeah, so oh, that's the leave. It's just like, you know, so like, you know, like, I understand the concept behind like the 70 30, but 60 40 would be very, very, it would be most helpful. And of course, you know, if things continue to go well, and there is a point where, you know, the venture does move without, you know, move outside of the realm of setting everything up here, uh, I would love to continue to have you as business partners. <laughs> everything comes back here, if anything. Exactly. A hey, businessman. Yes. What's what splits going your way? 
<laughs> you want to determine that <laughs> and maybe get it on your side? I, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Like my brain is frying. You're saying 60, 40. Yeah. When you had 70, 30 before, but you don't know what side the 70 and 30 is, unless you, unless you're assuming one way. Yeah, no, I was assuming okay. that they take the majority of the yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't want to make sure you understand. I'm like, hold yeah. up. <laughs> it's like, let's, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's see what we could do here. So, so you yeah, want to, go, you want to go sheet down and try to get 40 instead of 30, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, roll me diplomacy. Does anybody oh God, else want to aid or help? Absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah, while this is going on, Beetle's making like small talk with the others in the bar, just like, oh, how are you guys? And stuff like that. I just, I just I can, I, can I spend a hero point to you, sure, <laughs> you sure can, because you rolled a 12. I, I did. Art stands up and goes, I need to talk to someone. Sorry about this. And leaves. Oh. <laughs> 16. Oh. Uh, they shake your hand and go, 70 30 sounds good. Clean <laughs> just kind of like, he's like, okay. To oh leave's no good, very bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Losing so much money today. Um, they shake that and go, like, when you come back, we'll get everything all written up and organized in a good contract. We'll get, we'll get our best scribes on it. Lee just like, kind of, he's just like, I really look forward to it. In our continued <laughs> working together. Is this why you died? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Too many failed diplomacy rolls. I specifically took a feat just to pick up diplomacy. I'm not naturally skilled in it. I have no <laughs> charisma. What, what should, have pick, sh should have picked up uh, additional lore mercantile. You're saying. Yeah, what is your your thing? Let's see. Skill train diplomacy. Ah. <laughs> there it is. He actually trained in it. <laughs> but you have to understand, if you didn't make that first roll, they would just say, we have contact with him now. We'll figure this out. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll send you some residuals for finding the lad. <laughs> so you did pretty well, all regards. You're going to get a lot of money from this. So nice. uh, so Hart and Beale, you guys go on to mingle with people. What, do you got, what are you two doing? Uh, I want to talk to Lorne. Okay. Oh, I'll get out of your way. <laughs> uh, Hart shoots finger guns at uh, the little bear that he once uh, he glares saw at you. Sh <laughs> shoot uh, shoot a creature from from the fucking sky with magical bolts, and he goes, "Nice to see that you're still around." He kind of takes his little hand mittens and try to like, finger guns back, but he has a perpetual <laughs> glare. <laughs> He's just made that way. It's fine. Uh, Hart walks up and smiles towards Master Lorne and goes, Master Lorne, I have a question. Ah, of course, Hart. What do you need help with? It, it, it's a bit private. Could could, could we walk over there? <laughs> and and Hart points towards, like, the fireplace. Sure, Hart, absolutely. Thank you, Let's thank you. Lorne will get over there. Beetle picks a cup off the counter and puts it to the side of his head. Uh, Everyone um, claps. <laughs> oh, no, he's trying uh, to listen to the faraway conversation. Oh, I think my bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Let, trying to be as yes. Roll me perception, Beetle. The eaves drop. Huh, huh, huh. I'm trying to drop eaves. <laughs> that was Ooh, but he is really, that's, that's he's really fucking perceptive. Um, he's really perceptive. Heart to keep it low. Uh, yeah. Roll me a stealth check. Oh. To keep it private. Oh, I'm not that great at that. I rolled a nine. Beetle, you're hearing it pretty well. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Hart walks over to the fireplace and uh, not knowing that Beetle is hearing this. <laughs> Hart, uh, Hart look, walks over with Lauren smiling, uh, just making small talk. And when they actually finally end up by the fireplace, he turns towards Lauren with a very serious face. Okay. Lorne, you are your master of magics. I've seen it. You are truly worthy of the title of wizard. Well, I've um, been around the magical proverbial block, yes. Yes. Um, 
I I know that it is extremely rude to ask of this. Um but may I may I have some aid from you right now? Well, what sort of aid are you looking for? Well, that's the I know that some magic users are insulted by this. So that is why I wanted to take this, you know, take this somewhat seriously. Hart pulls out a letter okay. and holds it forward to Lorne. I know that magic users are capable of sending messages far, far away uh, where words cannot travel, where even they can talk to the dead and things like that, depending on the magic user. And you are the strongest magic user that I know of. Uh, I would ask Talim if it was to talk with someone dead, but I would like you to send this message to my father, if you may. I have learned how to read and write, uh, thanks to Beetle, my my brother, my brother in arms and brother in kinship, and and I want to update my father on my doings. Lauren will nod. Um, here we go. Wow, the first question is hot. I don't know who your father is. Who is your father? He lives in the southern parts of the world. I do not know where. I am not a person who knows of maps or positions. So I, a I ask you since perhaps you could and he he po he pokes at his the temple of his head figure it out by looking in here it's like so long ago i do not wish to go into anyone's mind that is not something that i okay. myself do not allow myself to do but i do have a solution i just need a bit of your hair. Okay. And he just pulls out a piece of his hair. And uh, he hands over what is essentially a small piece of brick that just has some smoke trailing from it. You see, Lauren will kind of take it and kind of roll it together in a way, and he'll mumble or so, and he'll kind of make it sort of like this kind of hardened object. And he will look over to the bear, this little poppet, and he will go, and like, Zoran! This way, please. Beetle hides the cup. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you see the bear just kind of turn over and his perpetual glare, he'll tap over and he'll kind of pat him and say, this is my familiar, Zorn. I think you two have met. Um, oh yeah, that guy can shoot a thing from like 30 feet away. Absolutely. Easy. And he will kneel down to Zorn and place this in his little mitten hand and go, um, and take your letter and also hand it to him and go, Use that, the fine heart's father, if you don't mind, and please deliver it, if you please. It's like, oh, and, and he'll hand um, uh, Zoran basically a little book of stuff. It's like, it's got like a, like a little journal or so, and goes, uh, just rip some of the papers out if you need to use some of those spells. Uh, that should help your journey along quite quickly. You see the bear will nod, not say a single word, grasps onto it, look over to you, heart, and bring up a little hand for like a high five. I I kneel down, high five the little bear. You notice when you put, do that bear, that bear does not fucking nudge. <laughs> so he's like, you try to like do a, well, you expect some weight, like, like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> he's a solid little creature filled with sand. It's like, uh, and the bear will march out, like the book in tow, everything else, and he's out on an adventure. Does it help if my dad is a wizard too? Or my father, my father, by title, my father. Um, I, he will figure it out. He'll resource okay. the little bastard. No, I want a mini series where it's just like the bear going through these different areas. <laughs> like mini errands, little mini yeah. zones where he's like sent to get some milk and all this bullshit happens. No, he's like, like the, enti the entire series is just him trying to find Hart's dad. Oh my 
<laughs> we're never lost. seeing him again. <laughs> we're never seeing him again. Uh, oh yeah, in case you want to call him back, um, maybe for uh, ease of use or whatever, my father is in Quan Shear. He's like, yeah, well, we'll figure it out once we get there. But I assume you're yeah. done with Lauren and you make small talk. Yeah, like, ah, exactly. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Master Lauren. No and then problem, back. Hon. So with that, is everybody good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Excellent. So what we're going to do, let's go take ourselves a little bit of a break. And okay. we'll be right back because you guys, I think the next thing you guys want to do is to confirm you're heading over to Curdenan's. Little yeah. dinner party, the meat yeah. curtain man. Yeah. Awesome. So with that, we'll be right back. We'll be right back, everybody. Like, Finally, keep... Min gets to meet <laughs> new boyfriend. We're oh back. my god! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm calling so you out excited. live on stream. All right, we Fighting are. You. We are back, everybody. Um, you guys have now left the Elmas, but before you all left, uh, Vina has come up and presented you all with cute little knitted scarfs. <gasps> and she comes up to you all and it says, um, I, I was making things during my, during my break times and I just wanted to say thank you to, to all of you. You know, I, I, it's sad that we could, it's sad to learn that our, that my friend has been captured and stuff, but I, uh, I just wanted to let you all know that I appreciate you doing everything you've been doing. It's just, You've been a, a lovely light here in, inside the tavern and here you go <laughs> she'll just hand <laughs> over this little rat folk uh little little waiter girl will will hand you all these lovely scarves for you heart it's like a wristband <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. it's like a friendship bracelet to you it's like it's very tiny for everybody so he you might just want to wrap it somewhere else but he ties it onto the side of his belt it's just one of the many knickknacks on his belt it's great and uh, she'll kind of go like, hi, and then leaves, you know, and as you guys head off to uh, the head over to Curdenan's thing. Do you guys want to uh, discuss anything before going there? Like what your plan is, what you're thinking about asking him, like all that other stuff. Um, Brug has decided not to go. Um, mm -hmm. Is that he just asks if you can ask on his behalf or so to kind of help out uh, his daughter, but he needs to take care of her right now and settle a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and he's also kind of signed up with the Elmas to be more like a bouncer temporarily in exchange for housing. So he's, he has to do his duties there. So that's why he's not going with you this time. Mm. But um, he asks on your behalf if he has like a cure or something like that, if possible. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So you would totally say yes to that, yeah. What we can do is um, assume that, you know, assuming, maybe I'm wrong, you know, um, that, you know, each of us may, you know, get a, a favor in exchange for some service um, or something because, you know, that's kind of what he was implied. Um, at least from Talim's standpoint, uh, because nothing, nothing is free in the world. Um, so Curtinan wants something from us. He's probably more than willing to give us something in exchange and considering, you know, he's the, you know, high conservator. He's probably yeah. a lot of resources and power at his disposal. We might be able to ask each of us a favor of like, you know, like one of us can ask uh, uh, for something for Brug or, you know, like, yeah. and then one of us can be like, hey, you know, like I'm cursed, but we're all actually cursed. And like, he just lift the curse from all of us. And, you know, something like that. That's that's, that's my approach on it. That's a good yeah. idea. I think what we should, when we get in there, what we should do is we should establish what he may potentially want from us before we tell him anything that we want because we don't we don't i feel like that gives him some kind of advantage we don't really know curtain as a person we don't know if he's going to try and take advantage of us you know all we have to go off of our rumors and the rumors are good but you know rumors aren't always true we huh. could also ask him if he knows any possible origin of this curse like what is the nature of it we don't know anything yeah. i have a question mm? if we all get like a a thing that we get to ask for could we try to figure out what that is now that's four things we can ask mm. well one of the things has to go to brog if we do get four 
Yeah. So that's three things for us. And, yeah. And uh, Talim will pipe in that point. Is like, considering that I've set up what is going to be hopefully a long-term business venture that could be quite profitable, I have nothing I would really like to ask of Ferdinand. Um, so I could ask in Brugstead. That's okay. kind of you. I can't really think of anything that I would want to ask. Anything in the world. A miracle. Well, the first one would go for Brug, right? The second one would probably be our curse. Right. Our so, curse, Brug. So yeah. then there's two more things. Yeah. I Maybe he can cure my bad back. <laughs> That'd be nice. Grace back and arthritis. <laughs> Like, her name is actually a time. notable chiropractor. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This entire time, but uh, by the way, like Gray's been kind of like just looking at the scarf and like admiring the stitch work. Oh yeah, like, she's, Beetle's wearing she's it. half paying attention. <laughs> Beetle has taken his bow tie off and he's just wearing the scarf around his neck. Hart snaps his fingers and points at Talim. You said that there will be problems for us since we're famous now. Well, not because you all are wanted. <gasps> yeah, famous. That could be the last thing we ask for. It, we could well, ask to, to not be have wanted our names anymore. It, it, uh, to have our names cleared. Think what? of it more like infamous. Famous. Uh, yeah, same yeah, thing. Heart same thing. Calf. Yeah, same thing. Jaleen just like, he puts his head in his hand. He's like, he's doing his best. He's doing his best. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Keep, so yeah, we we've got it. We've got our four things. If he even gives us four, we've got our four things. Uh, let's try not to tell him the four things until we have an idea of what he might ask us to do. For he him. might not even give us four things. He might not even give us four things, and if he doesn't, I guess we prioritize the curse. But then secondary, we could also be like, "Hi, there's this little kitten who's very sick. Please help." Could we yeah. all, if we do have four four ones, couldn't we just also combine the curse bit and helping Grace back by asking <gasps> for 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 good health and good oh. fortune? We have ideas, but You're we won't really know for smart. sure until we talk to him. Yeah. And you you have you have a sort of a plan. You have your priorities set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here I'm excited for this dinner. It looks like we all yeah. dressed up. Did he's you? dressed the same as he always is. <laughs> <laughs> Gray still got his ghostly cute, attire doesn't cute change. Dress because it's on. part of his fucking soul. <laughs> it looks like we all dressed up. Three of them wearing the scarves differently. Talib's not wearing it at all. He's got fucking. He's got three arrows sticking out of his back. You know, yeah. he's just as dead as ever. <laughs> yep. Well, Are you meaning uh, that Talim wouldn't turn the scarf into a ghost scarf? Oh, he did. Throw it over yeah, the arrows. It, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Good. Yeah. Nice. Cover up the arrows with the scarf. <laughs> okay. It's like I'm wearing a pin on my own. <laughs> He's hiding it. He doesn't want to be real. Like somebody out of Aladdin's parade. <laughs> Make way for Prince Ali. The scarf just waving in the wind. Make oh. way. For no, 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 that, 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 that's all we can sing before they come after us. <laughs> so they're coming after you all. Um, oh, one no. of you gets shot. So basically, as you guys <laughs> head over to uh, the mega, pretty much this sort of mansion area, you guys begin to head more into the Queen's Palaster and you yeah. begin to enter this area, which is a lot more flowery, basically flowery, more, more greenery, more... Basically, I'm doing some in thing music because I can't find anything in tabletopaudio.com, which is a fantastic site. You all should go there. Um, is it closer to the beanstalk? It is it is pretty close to the beanstalk, the beanstalk, ah. the, the big palaster that's kind of in the middle of Queens. But you all begin to head inside uh, or head further in. And what a person meets up with you as you start entering the Queen's palaster 
and you see it's the individual wearing sort of like a, a shawl, kind of like cloth piece, kind of trying to simulate hair in a way. It's also wearing a hat piece that is a bit pointed and also is wearing a particular dress with a waistline way too thin for itself. It's a bit dangly on itself. You notice the arms are a bit more spindly on the fingers, but it looks elegant. It looks clean, the, the uh, clothing that it wears, although it's simple in some ways or fantastical in others, has a bit of a long glove and these mechanical sort of like metal arcane etched hands. Um, and one hand is metal and another one seems to be made of wood. Um, this individual, this creature, this Atmari that you've now learned them to be from the parade comes up to you all and goes, oh, there you are. I'm, it's like this vessel is here to lead you to Kernand, if you would please follow me. Oh, hi. Oh, wow, that's, that's mighty convenient and nice of you. Thank you so much. It's like, thank you. Uh, I, of course, uh, please follow, follow this vessel and uh, this this individual will bring you over. So here's the thing about Atmari. <laughs> That's very hard yeah. even for me. Um, <laughs> the, the concept is this vessel. Yeah. I, my vocabulary defaults to this thing, this person, yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. Understand what I'm meaning. <laughs> He's what I'm yeah, gonna yeah, ask yeah. of everybody. Yeah, yeah, just to clarify yeah. that. You're doing your best. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got you. We got you. Even going with my bullshit, it's fucking hard to keep it up. Right? <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of shit to keep up things on. Regardless, uh, you guys begin to head over and bring you to this mansion of a deal. You see there's a ton of greenery around. It's a bit shortened up. I didn't want to do a huge spread just to see it for a second. But um, mm. imagine you're going up with rows of flowers and rows of um, just greenery. Fine, hedge, fine hedges are made and you notice a lot of Dern soldiers uh, kind of posted up throughout the mansion. Um, you see your escort will bring you over and kind of motion to the door and going, we have made it. Um, Curtin Ann has escorted a lot of guests outside already, so it'll be more of an intimate dinner tonight. Intimate? Like a date? I've never got on one of those before. <laughs> Gray grabs Beetle's mouth and shuts it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Beetle you. Beetle is muzzled. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, Fly the muzzle! <laughs> you see that Mari, you see that Mari will look, uh, kind of lean down. He's like, you, Curtinan brought you on a date? <laughs> <laughs> During the parade, and then he asks us to come here. Why the conservatives, if only I was so lucky. <laughs> yeah, all four of us. Wow, Talim will, will getting right around will, uh, these new towns. <laughs> Talim politely raises his hand and it's, I believe, it's like, I believe my companions have uh, misconstrued things. Um, a bit of a cultural misunderstanding. You will have to forgive us. We have been invited by the High Conserve um, because he has expressed interest in our abilities. Like, oh my. Out of date and your abilities? I God not, 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 uh, not, <laughs> not that kind of date, no. Beetle goodness. starts laughing. His mouth is still yeah. clamped, so his cheeks are like puffing full of air, like sporadically, like <laughs> as he's trying to laugh. <laughs> you see you see uh this the Atmari's like crystal, crystallized head or so kind of flashes with the skull. You see a, the skull and a little bit of pink hue comes up on the crystal <laughs> face. And, and, and you're fucking with us. You're fucking with us. You're and fucking the hands with us. are you're coming up to the side of the head and go, well, I don't let me, let me get you inside so the party can begin. And you'll see the, <laughs> it'll come through and she'll kind of wave at some of the soldiers. You'll see they'll nod, uh, fairly disciplined, but you see the left one is an orc and the right one is a gnoll. Mm. And the gnolls will kind of nod to you, uh, Gray, but do do nothing else. Gnoll, recognize gnoll. <laughs> they just nod. Uh, you see that. <gasps> so I will open it up and as you walk inside, you see you would expect a party or so. You would expect something 
major and fantastical in music playing, but what you notice are these more of these crystal beings seemingly setting up. Really, you seem you came here very early. Like you believe oh. you are very early, but you know you're here on time. You know you know you're. In fact, you might have been just tiny bit fashionably late, and for what Kernan kind of asked you for, you know, it was very much at night, and you're like, what the hell? Uh, but as you're looking around, it seems like they're setting things up. Uh, is this where... Sorry, I shouldn't ask. I should just let you take us, but we're not... We're, we're on time, right? Oh, don't worry. Um, basically, a lot of other guests are coming in after the event is over. Some oh. people, some people at the event love to get up close and personal uh, to see the spectacle, really. And normally the view from here isn't much to their liking, even though we provide comforts, but they'll be here after. Uh, the, sorry, uh, the spectacle? Oh, yes, there's a huge event going out. So here, yeah, just, you can view it with, uh, uh, our Lord Cunanand. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. All right. All right, yeah. Lead on. Well, thank you, yeah. ma'am. She'll, uh, <laughs> she'll leave all upstairs. I'll move your tokens for you and make it a little bit okay. easier. Okay. Um, and she'll bring you up to the door and and with a bit of a floor still. Oh, oh, well, well, you burst through. You, <laughs> you faked the wall, Talim, not really needing it. <laughs> oh, bye. Okay, I was getting you adjusted there. You faked the wall. <laughs> And uh, you all see Kurdanan. Kurdanan looks at you, Talim. I'll move you here just to keep you a little bit more fashionable. <laughs> oh my god! You canonically bust through the wall! I, uh, oh my god! I'm also noticing there's a bit of an error. So I will have to rescind what was happening here because thanks, Foundry, for some reason you no, ruined the spectacle. Multiple soldiers come out of invisibility all around you in case you're about to fucking do something as a fantastical display. Thanks, Foundry, for fucking up. Anyway, <laughs> they all come up and um, and present themselves to all of you. Um, Kurdanan, to, to now set the scene a bit more appropriately, Kurdanan is kind of standing on this sort of balcony. You guys have gone into this mansion, up these flight of stairs, uh, to this sort of overhang that looks over most of the mansion. After you've opened up the door, you see Kurdanan has an array of food down and, and uh, various cups and uh, glasses filled up with liquids and stuff and drink and such. And Kurdanan is kind of looking outside of this balcony. You, you kind of go into like this like stone porch that kind of is kind of flanked by the mansion itself, but you can see outward. There's a bit of a platform there as well that allows one to kind of like sit down at a table and kind of see the spectacle that's going on. You're not quite getting a good angle of what it is just yet from where you are. Uh, but after Talim's ghostly entrance and you guys opening the door, um, you see Kurdanan will turn to you all uh, and say, ah, good. I'm so happy that you were able to make it. I was fearful as the crowd down there has become quite excited for the main event. I was, you know how outset can be, cut purses and people taking advantage of one another. Please, sit, and he'll oh. motion to the table. Oh. A big table or a small table? The big table. Okay. I have arranged some of our food, so if you're hungry, I've not been able to eat any of your own food that you were selling. Uh, I hope this is a kindness that you can appreciate. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Also, Thank you for this kindness. Yes, please enjoy for a moment. And you see, Colonel will take a seat, seat with you all on the other side, and uh, and he'll just watch you. Do you guys eat the food at all, or? Uh, Beetle doesn't tuck in, but he does admire the fetal position chicken plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Green's gonna take a deep whiff of this of the food, give it a nice. Uh, once over yeah, with the nose. Yeah. Give me a perception check. Perception, we're rolling perception. I got a four for a total of four. Uh, sorry, a four for a total of 14. Food smells amazing. Food smell good. It's food is awesome. You're like you it's hot. This is the high class shit. <laughs> like this is really, really good. Grable very carefully and politely start putting food on her plate. She wants to like, just 
just go like ravenously on this food, but she's like, no, I'm gonna behave. This yeah. is a very important thing. She's just like very carefully. You'll notice Kurt and I will lean over a little bit, kind of motioning to you, Gray, and he'll say, it is okay, live a little. And he'll oh. lean back. She puts a whole fucking drumstick in her face. <laughs> 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 Harp's, <laughs> Harp's eyes spread open as he just reaches a hand through this, uh, like, fruit platter in front of him. You and he put gra- the whole damn pineapple in your mouth. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, he picks up uh, what looks like a brown and, like, very fibrous thing. Very round. Uh, oh, God, and and he, he, he holds it up and goes... Yo, Talim! They got coconuts! Like from home! And he tosses one over to Talim. I go through! <laughs> I don't, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 No, I got <laughs> Yeah, athletics check. See if you actually <laughs> catch it. Because of your ghost ability. Yep, yep. Can I? Can I? Oh. It passes through Talim's hands and, loud, and lands loudly on the table. What did you roll? I podcast? rolled a, uh, a 14. I we love you, podcast. I hope you're having a good work, walk, whatever you're doing. Good drive. <laughs> yeah. So, so with the 14, obviously the coconut, as you said, just passes right through. And, just... <laughs> and Talim like holds his hand open, looks at heart, and is just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you see, Curtinan will put a hand on uh, above his uh, gem and he laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Like Talib, Talib's facade of like the like the calm and composed and well mannered merchants is completely shattered by this. He's just like, really? <laughs> bro. <laughs> Gray, will, Gray will kind of like make the motion of like patting Talim on his shoulder. <laughs> heart, heart punctures a coconut with his index finger, uh, and then just starts sipping from it. Looks over at Talim like, what you don't like coconuts? <laughs> Talim right. will calmly mage hand the coconut up and set it on the fruit platter that is, <laughs> uh, set it to like the side of the fruit platter that is uh, near him, and uh, right. kind of like just just like fold his hands back. Um, Beetle it, twists it, and he it, holds open his hands. He holds open his hands at heart, and he's like, "Can I can I try some of that? That's from your home." Oh yeah, this is from like my home area, I've like the, I, the Southern that. Islands, Southern I've Islands of Quan Chi. Oh it's God, called you know a, what? it's called a cocoa nut, but it's cocoa not an actual, it's not an actual nut. That's no, the it's fun not. It's part. Cocoa, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes, <laughs> he takes one and he dunks it at his forehead to break it in two, <gasps> and then, and Co- then he puts it, th- and then he puts one down in front of Beetle, like with the liquid still in it, oh. and he scrapes out some of uh, the coconut fat at the side. Try to oh. drink it with some of this, and he takes some. Lime squeezes that in there. This is amazing! And he picks it up and he takes a little sip. Wow! That's yeah. like anything I've ever tasted before! Yeah. yeah. This. How, how much did you pay to get this in here? And uh, looks over at Curtin. We were able to acquire it from the various markets here. We hadn't selected the best. Oh my goodness! This is incredible! Thank you so, so much. What a surprise. I wasn't expecting, I mean, I was expecting dinner, but this is, I've never even seen a coconut before. I think I've seen a coconut before. Maybe it was a big rock. <laughs> Kernan will kind of nod and you'll, you'll see that, um, one of the other Edmari folks, this one seemingly different from before, uh, will enter inside holding a, uh, this platter. And has it has a uh, clear pitcher on it with a couple glasses, and you see inside this pitcher is just kind of like sort of tr- glowing, um, like material or so, like like liquid or so. And she pours a bit, pours a bit, and places it in front of uh, Curtinand, and you'll see he'll go, ah, thank you, and he will pick it up and he'll bring it up to his to the crystal that's up to him. And you'll see the see a skull, a human skull will come forth as if it is meeting the glass and he drinks from it. This kind of like 
glowing type of liquid or so. And um, he'll like take a little sip and the skull just rescinds back a little bit. He places it down uh, and he looks at you, Talim. And he, he saw the thing with the coconut go through you and he's like, I see you can't handle anything. It seems to just go right through you. What I would like to offer you is, uh, and he'll motion to some of the translucent stuff is, it's condensed, but it is at ma, and I think you might be able to partake. It's quite refreshing. Uh, uh, did you say at ma? Um, would you know what that word means is the soul? Yeah. Can I, can I? We uh, learned about Atma in another session. I have a yeah. note on it. Yeah. I was going to say, can I roll uh, occultism to, to know more about it? Absolutely. Or? Yeah. Primers are particularly in this state or so. I rolled an 18 for a total of 30. <laughs> Excellent. God dang. So what you're seeing is that. Um, I know occult shit. <laughs> I mean, obviously Atma is pretty much, a, or souls and things like that, pretty much in congruence. Um, what you're seeing, what's happened here is that, you know, whatever to make this possible is that obviously these folks here have found a way to consume it. And after what you're kind of seeing and things are kind of linking up in your mind, this is how some of them eat, uh, eat or consume, or like they maybe just keep going in some way, shape or form. Um, due to your 30, which is a, really high roll, uh, not quite a critical success, but still really good. You know that this is, you know, you know how like vampires are where they drink right. blood. Right. This is something That's akin the... of like going with souls in your mind. Okay. Um, and so you see this individual will come up to you and offer you a glass or so, but up to you, you understand that there are some ghosts out there, some haunted creatures that might just gobble this up but that's why they kind of like you know suck the souls out of people or so it's a very raw form of extracting that from people and you understand Yo, how from the evil are you yeah it's like from the <laughs> conservants or so understands of maintaining souls or finding use out of uh the souls and mm. they might call come in different forms or ways or so or in some manner of way that they manipulate it to turn into use um and, and it's now being offered to you. Um, Talim will uh, actually like raise a hand and is like, my thanks, I conserve, but I will politely decline. I am sustained through other means that bind me to this realm. Of course. And you'll see the servant will leave. Uh, currently, I will now lean forward and go, I'm glad you've enjoyed the food. But of course, I have brought you here and as you've shown yourself to be uh, those who wish to conserve life as much as possible, it seems you've done. You were very impressive. I heard from the papers of your exploits for the run. Or in a more fantastical detail. Uh, but I have brought you here as as you've been noticed on the pamphlets that were passed around that I am to help you with things, I would like to learn what you, or what ails you, really. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope you don't mind, but if, if it would be okay to go a little off that topic, I, sorry, the curiosity has just been a lot, but what, what is this event that's going to be happening? Oh, would you like to see? Uh, if if it wouldn't be any trouble. Certainly. We can move over to the table over there if you're done eating. And you see, he'll stand up and he'll walk over to a table uh, that's up there. Everybody can move if you would like. And as you move over, you see there is a huge crowd gathered. Uh, there is a huge crowd gathered, and let me move him for you all, um, over around a platform with a hole in the middle, and there is oh. a wooden beam up with a dangling noose from it. Oh! oh. So, chat, this is one thing I want to communicate with you with. Uh, this is a little chat interaction thing that I can do for you. Hey, chat, uh, <laughs> ra raise of hands, who wants to be executed? <laughs> Oh 
if you wish to be executed, uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> and oh my you can, and for every, every, I like how one of the sub, first ones is Maticus, one of the mods. Me! If you, Please free me from if this you do a sub, I will execute you. I'll call out your name and execute you. Oh my or god. Bit, or, or at 500 bits or so. I'll do this that. This isn't as well. fucked up at all. <laughs> It's like, Holy so here's shit. the thing with clear communication. This is what they wanted. This is what they wanted. And chat the wants chatters to be executed. long for the gallows. Yeah, they long for it. It's what they want. Oh my <laughs> goodness. There's a lot of you. Okay. Holy <laughs> shit. I can't wait for the event. I can't wait for the event. So many executions. So there's uh, a lot of you now. <laughs> <laughs> there's so not you... one news. There's X amount of news. Yeah, yeah, there's an X amount of news. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is this like the scenes from Pirates of the Caribbean where there's just people just lying yes. up? Yes. <laughs> yeah, one They're guy just... looks down, he's like, first time. <laughs> <laughs> They're just rowing down, man. So I'll do my very best to get them. Like, basically, you're hearing a crier as Kurt and Ann kind of like proceeds over it basically um like he's looking over and you're basically hearing like aura aka <laughs> like fi like fine for actually i need to get something to <laughs> kind of yeah, like they're uh, their let's crimes. See. <laughs> this is going to spark the same joy as, as rolling a conan character and seeing what the random crimes it's given you is <laughs> this is exactly the fucking same like <laughs> Oh All right, let me see God. here. All right, so I'm gonna give some of y'all some just random things. So, Horror Arkham for crimes of rhymes of illegal witchcraft. <laughs> it's you're either being beheaded or you're being hung. <laughs> so, oh my gone. And the next up is basically Will Rob 87 for treason to the assembly. <laughs> Anger Treason Medic of having man. numbers in your name. <laughs> Anger Medic Man for heresy. Whoosh. Huh. Robot for a poor for cow tipping. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> I had an uncle named Robots for a poor beetle clasps his sternum. <laughs> Maticus for cabbage theft. Whoosh. <laughs> oh, that's a bad one. Small Yo. guy for joust jumping. Whoosh. Gruden. For, let's see, surf surfing. Whoosh. <laughs> and Hard is standing there eating fruit. He has the fruit platter with him. Oh he has my to stand there God. eating. It's like, Gudrun for moat skinny dipping. Whoosh. <laughs> Clock for ale watering. Whoosh. <laughs> and then, and <laughs> Krim Killer for cobalt teasing. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> Beetle looks fucking offended. Plax is Lord Parasita for fake knighthood. Woosk. And then Duke of Mania for goblet swapping. Woosk. And then catapult uh, and for Dragon Man 99 for catapult tampering. Woosk. And oh. we have answer moves for 500 vits for jester impersonation. Woosk. Oh. oh, that's not an impersonation. <laughs> and a serial for unlicensed loot playing. Woosk. <laughs> then we have Ironclad Golf with castle squatting. Woosk. And the Orc Dare You for chainmail fraud. Woosk. No fucking way. And of course we have, let me see, in Little Alien for tunic mis mismatching. Woosk. Of course. Just bullshit course. charges for a lot of them. Except for a whole bunch of them, and I'll do, um... Did I do the Orc Dario? I think I did. Whatever. Orc Dario! Yes. Magic bean scamming! For for his brother, twin brother! Woosk! <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. That, that is it. Thank you, chat, for participating. So sorry if I'm skipping anybody out or so. But, uh, thank you all for your contributions. It's just a fun it's a bit. lot of people! Yeah, a lot of people just getting executed left and right. Um, Curdenan is presiding over it, and... If he could frown, you kind of see that he would do so. But he goes, it's such a loss of life, but it is interesting to see how other cultures deal with those who are deemed to be no longer useful in their eyes. 
It is something that pains me. It's such as our cups. And did any of you bring your drink over? Uh, I don't no. think Gray even started drinking. No, Beetle didn't even take a drink from one of the drinks. He was been drinking a coconut. Yeah. He'll uh. he'll bring out one of his wine uh, glasses and he'll tap, um, on the you kind of like the base not like the, the base the bottom but the part that holds the cup and the stem or shaft or whatever the glass, and yeah. he'll tap on it and then you see that there is a small little gem, and goes for those who. Uh, we believe that everyone is useful in some ways, even tink, 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 and day-to-day -day life. And you see he'll bring the glass over, let it go, and it will float there. What do you can want to I have some, Can I have some of that, Atma? <laughs> uh, Beetle looks well, at heart in horror. Like, he can't even mask it. He's he's paled a little bit and he kind of swats at Hart's knee and gops up at him like, what? Yeah, I want to try it. That's, that's people. Talim uh, floats there. His hands are, you know, folded behind his back and uh, he looks at the gallows. He looks back to uh, Kurdnan and he's like, I have found I can't serve at the Rule of outset is exceedingly and unfortunately brutal and wasteful. It is very distressing to see hopes, dreams, talents, and lives wasted. Um, but it is, as you said, different cultures. Mm, no. Tyrant skilled are especially uh, messy. They are. They do have their uses, though. Every society has a different way of going through it, and Outset has been a long-standing city. So, one of the best, I hear. Do you ob obtain your atma, uh, 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 uh um, are they, is your atma grass-fed? Uh, free ethically, <laughs> ethically, ethically sword 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 Imagining there's gonna be a fucking carton of liquid souls, it just kind of like yeah. it's like a, the thumbs up, like a really happy soul farmer, just going yeah. like free rain souls, just making sure yeah, they're happy man. before they die. Yeah, <laughs> this know? not just this soul to run around. Um, I Kurt, Kurt will ignore what you asked him. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and he will, he will, he will address uh, or continue what he was saying to Talim, saying, um, he's like. As much as there are criticisms to be had on the city itself, I find it to be fascinating. It is a beautiful city, full of life and wonder, hopes and dreams, and even opportunity. Of course, you have come to me for opportunity, and I would like to ask how I can aid you. Gray will finally speak up after just the long silence of just watching execution after execution and she'll just kind of quietly go we're cursed oh terrible Beetle indeed. makes tiny little fists but maybe before we talk about that is there something you would want from us in return for helping us let's make sure let's try to get to an order first tell me what you need Beetle shoots Gray a look. <laughs> Gray's gonna, Gray's gonna like, uh, she's gonna look at the others. She's like, who has it? Who has the amulet? I don't know who has it. It's on uh, all of us at the same time, all of the time. Everyone, roll me a perception check. <laughs> and tell me what you roll. Right, it's right there on the table. I rolled a total of twenty-two. I rolled a total, a total of twenty-four. I rolled a total of twenty-nine. I rolled a total of 20. Gray, as everyone's trying to look for it or so, when you like like lift up like a piece of clothing or look through your sleeve and stuff, you'll notice a flash of the amulet and it like 
and you try to go to grab it, like you blink and it boom, it's gone. You try to look again and then it's like, oh, it's right there. My it's gone. It's on my foot. Blink, it's gone. She lets out a frustrated growl. It's, it moves and it messes with our perception. It makes us see things. I don't know how much longer I can see the things it's shown me. Uh, Curtain Animal will look at you, uh, Gray, and say, try to find it and concentrate on it. Do not blink, <sighs> do not move, just concentrate and tell me where it is. Takes in a deep, deep breath. It's in my hand. She'll concentrate. He looks at your hand, and you look at your hand, but it's not in your hand. It is now in Talim's hand. Fuck! <laughs> Gray just kind of motions like... <laughs> Did Talim, like, bring his hand out from behind his back and, like, show it to Curtinan? As he looks down and he goes... Well, where is it? You look down, it's gone. <laughs> Apparently it is... It's running! Shy. <laughs> it doesn't want to be lifted! The curse is running! <laughs> Curtain Ann will, uh, will then say, tell me the nature of this curse. Tell me in some detail of what it is. It's a red gem. We obtained it from the deep below the Pons Palaster, yeah. one of the northwestern parts of the city. Was it on a crown? It was, it was on that in, thing that... It was, it's housed in a metallic, th it looks like an amulet. It was originally grafted in some makeshift crown. Yeah. The red gem appears in visions, in sound, in emotion. It is um, manipulative in nature. It often has the ability to, within our minds, take the forms of those that we hold dear or consider precious. Gray kind of sinks when he says that. But an able nod, he goes. It is a very complicated sounding curse indeed. I'm not 100% sure if I can cure you, if we cannot, if you cannot find this amulet, but I have a suspicion of some way that I can help you. But I notice that your friend here, and he'll point to Talim, has run into trouble, I assume, in an association with this thing. Huh? <laughs> There. He has perished. Indeed, there Multiple was a times, time when I you. was... <laughs> Once already, I had been severed from the mortal coil. Um, as you can see, and he will, like, hold out his hands, and, uh, like, even if there's, like, a glass on the table, he will, you know, like, pass his hand through it. I have returned. Unfortunately, I have yet again visited that store, but in this time, I felt it was different. I was here, but not. I visited places that I had been before, but not truly. I saw things that I have experienced in the past, but different. And in the end, I was returned. But it feels as though I've been returned with condition. But, but didn't Lorne bring you back? To clarify on that, this thing has been able to find where you are and everything else. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought you were making a, a comment that was made. My bad. Um, yeah, she asked you, did Lorne bring you back? Kind of question. My bad. Yeah. I thought you meant something else completely. Like, you're making it sound like the crystal might have played a hand to bring you back. So Beetle is asking, because he's confused. He's like, didn't Lorne bring you back? 
uh Talim will look at Beetle and look at the rest of the party and it's like I do not think it was Lorne's efforts alone that returned me to the mortal realm I think whatever forces within this crystal has also played a hand and left its mark Well, as if he's like rubbing his chin or so with his uh, covered mask he will uh, kind of offer one of his hands out and go I can help you with your current condition if you will allow me what? I would be most appreciative of the assistance and uh, as you I assume you come to him or so. He will ask, yeah. um, is like, but is this what you want help with? There are others we would like to help. I am persistent in my existence, and I have not found the impact of this thing such to be greatly affecting in it. You will not heal. Yeah, and Tilly was like, but if you are willing to help us in multiple ways, I would be most thankful, I can't serve. Because it would really allow us to continue what we do. He will nod. Uh, he will say, I will help you with your condition. As for your ward at the parade. And if you want to help, want me to help you for anything else, I'll ask you to do a task for me. A fair exchange of services. A merchant could ask for no more fair deal. He'll look to the rest of you all and say, Is your party in agreement? This isn't what we talked about. Gray will kind of look up and kind of go like, Initially, just the curse is what we needed. There's also... A sick child that we know who needs assistance. I am willing to do whatever needs to be done. My life is almost at its end. I'm fine with whatever. And on, um, to clarify, he said, um, he said, I cannot help you. Oh, actually, no, no, let me roll back. Da, da, da. So I'm going through all my notes. He basically uh, looks to all of you and says, I yawn curse or your condition uh, will be related to the task that I give you to help you with this so as you help me you're also helping yourselves as for your Mr. Tleem's condition I can help cure it at least I can cure him as for removing your curse here and now I'm afraid I do not have the power to do that but I have my suspicions of what we're looking for can help cure it. Grail, look over at the party. Not a little bit. Kaleem will look around to everybody else for kind of a uh, consensus as well. Yeah. I wasn't expecting us to get out of this without having to do more stuff. So, I knew we would yeah. have to do more too, but I would just like to know more details if that would be okay before I agree to anything of course uh Curdenan will um look over I look over to the crowd and you see that just more people are coming through but you also start noticing three people are being lined up and you see the crowds are gathering even more um as he is basically you know getting ready to look at you uh but he looks at you, Beetle, going like, with such doubt, I'm not quite sure you might even be able to survive the task. Huh? Like, it's, I... It's not doubt, it's just wanting to know what you're about to send us out to do. I like, want to make sure... It's like, Curtinan looks at you, like, we kind of... You'll see that he's just staring directly at you, and he goes like, I understand, but... You see that I have been here looking for something and that something seems to be related to your curse. Some some of the symptoms seem similar. 
and from various texts of the object that we are looking for, seems very similar to what this is doing to you. And I believe if I send you all to find it, you might be able to find a cure there as well. Or whatever object that we're looking for, if you hand it to me, I might be able to cure you for what, of what you have. Okay. Gray nods firmly. Before I send you on this task, however, and he will look back over to pretty much the execution, <laughs> you know, platform of all that's been going on. Um, he, said, he goes, I'm very curious about something from all of you. If you would indulge me for a bit, you know, come to the balcony. You may want to see this. And uh, he'll motion down to this huge crowd um, and up on the platforms, Three people are brought up. Three people are brought up, and uh, Kurt and will move. So, Hart, you can go look here, because he can he towers over and he's able to see. Um, on this platform, three people come up. Uh, you see one of the individuals. Sorry, I do apologize for, for video uh, folks. Don't have art of these fellows, unfortunately, so please forgive me. Uh, but I'll do my best to describe them for you. Uh, a huge fellow. Basically, think of an ogre. An ogre wearing fine dress and all, and they're wearing bags over their heads. Um, this ogre's wearing very finery. Of course, his big belly and everything's out, chest hair's there, all that other stuff. Just like, just, just a big old guy. Sort of just comes up onto the stage. The second one is a finely dressed... Uh, like with black pants, fancy dress shoes, and a very flowery, puffy white shirt. And you can notice a red tail, a red cat's tail coming out from behind. Um, also with a bag over their head. And to the right is someone that looks sort of like the, the body of a frog. You would identify the ancestry as a gripply. Uh, you hear just coming up uh, onto the platform itself. I'm trying to find a uh, an appropriate bit of music for this. And as it comes up, you see Curtinan kind of leans forward and you hear um, an announcer come up and goes and brings out a scroll. Provisioner Chokis the fourth to be executed for eating five citizens of Elsit and for destroying a china shop in Your pursuit time? and in pursuit of our justice and you'll hear the you see the bag just whoosh, kind of unfurl unfurl and you see this ogre this adorable looking man <laughs> this adorable look i go chokers didn't eat nobody chokers was oh. just simply enjoying a lovely ramen meal down in the streets Chalkers don't hurt nobody. Oh, Chalkers doesn't no. hurt the soul. <laughs> no. You see this big no. ogre man just start sobbing and crying. <laughs> the next one, the next one's of, of Dinky Hot, the 30th. Oh, um, this seems edited. <laughs> you see the thing I was scribbled through. Like, it's like, this weird looking cat person whoosh can you see it's a it's a it's a uh, very cute little red-headed cat boy or so um let's uh, say like for crimes of playing a piano poorly at a nobleman's profession and crashing said nobleman's gathering oh. it's like and so for trespassing you just see this cat just smirk <laughs> and say <laughs> nothing um, and then for the third person, it's like, it's a, in, in chat, I will allow you to name this frog. What is the name of this frog oh. criminal that they have captured? Give me a name, chat. I'll pick one randomly from you all. No, Chokus. I fucking knew it. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I hate, I hate Froggy. I saw it fucking coming. I saw it fucking coming. God damn it. <laughs> That's a little spot on, chat. I will I will name it Locke. 
Full name that. Toady Lock. <laughs> yeah, to like, <laughs> and, 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 <gasps> and finally, Lock, um, who murdered five families and ate three people. <laughs> Oh and and it'll re <laughs> and reveal uh, whoosh, the hood, and you'll see this frog, um, basically just kind of look at everything, eyes of a killer, no emotion. <laughs> look over, and you'll hear, "I'll do it again." <laughs> are the, uh, hold on, Zorin. I have to ask: Are the eyes front facing because yes. they're a predator? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's uh, terrifying. How I'm, terrifying, actually. <laughs> That's fucking horrific. I'm still hungry. <laughs> oh, looks up from the gallows, but, sees the kobold standing on the balcony. Mm, bite size. Mm. <laughs> Snack. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll Beetle see that. Beetle crouches down, his snoot is kind of poking out in the separated, <laughs> like, bricks of the balcony, and he's just kind of <laughs> hiding with his eyes. <laughs> the yeah. crowd boos the frog, just starts throwing shit, and of course, all the all the executioners and people presiding stuff are trying to like calm everyone down and put everybody in order. Several uh, tyrant scar or tyrant skilled people and some soldiers try to calm people down and restore order. Curdinan, uh will uh, be now at the head or kind of like the end of this table, and it goes. It is unfortunate, Steel, that so much death has to be made. But I have to ask all of you if a decision is to be made that you could save one of them, but not all of them, would you <laughs> take it? That's not horse. If y'all turn to him, he will uh, procure a letter. It is a it is a blue envelope with the seal of the prince on it, kind of sealing it off. And he says, "Here I have a pardon that can be used for one of them. But let's just make it a bit of a game, shall we?" And he will take uh -uh. three cards and place them on the table. And he'll look at you all and say. I have put the initials of each of them on one of these, on each of these cards. If you could save a life, knowing that you could save one that you deem to be unworthy, but still save one, would you? Whichever is chosen gets pardoned. Heart whispers. I mean, one of them just ate five people. As it's just five people. <laughs> Jalene will look down at the cards and um. I'll kill them all. I'll eat them all. He will <laughs> look behind them, and especially like with the with the frog continuing to comment, and it's like the justice of outset is oftentimes brutal and wasteful. I put ranch on them. But oftentimes, <laughs> justice must be carried out, uh, even at the expense of others. And he will blindly look away from the cards. Uh huh. The boy only snuck into a party. It was just a, you know, a really important party. But he just snuck into a party, and he, he looks like just a guy. <laughs> he sobs. Begging for his life, the big ogre. The ogre sounds like he wasn't even doing what he is being charged with. Yo, we I feel don't like know. he was being. He set up the frog could have eaten us. Oh gosh. Uh, uh, I feel like we're gonna uh, out. Hey, cab. Question. Yeah. How much is Talim like? scratching his arm to not do anything he's Just not for, he is okay. absolutely stone cold like okay, it is probably cool. the most undead you have ever seen him he cares nothing for the lives heart, heart leans a little bit over to Talima goes you want to make a bet oh, oh. Talima raises an eyebrow 
Um, and he's just like, I bet. I bet. The man the behind conditions. Uh, is literally just on the out outcome of those people. Heart nods down, eating like a pineapple. I think that the test behind us is literally just a, a agreed test. This man behind us, he just wants us to, you know, preserve things, right? Preservation often comes at the cost of sacrifice. Right, exactly. So, to him, we probably win if we just let it go, right? If we just do nothing. If it is such a menial test, then I truly have no interest in it. My interests lie elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. The bet is that uh, all of the cards behind us have the name of that guy. And uh, uh, and uh, Talim point sees as Hart points down towards the frog. <laughs> that this is a test that uh, if we are to do it, that guy goes free just to punish us for doing some greedy thing. My tummy it's hurts. Nothing, it's <laughs> not an unreasonable assumption. But it is one that I would prefer not to risk. Especially one so unrepentant. Mm. He just gonna slap over here with his bare feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Curtain sir. Yes, Beetle. Do we have any more information on these people? Oh, absolutely. Which one would you like to learn more of? Uh, I'd hurry as uh, huh. they might be soon sharpening the axe. The, 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 the one in the middle, all he did was go into a party, right? That he shouldn't have gone into, but he looks like a, a young lad, a young man. I don't... You see, he'll, Curtin Ann will kind of reach a hand over and from somewhere onto the side, a servant comes up, hands over some papers and he'll bring it up and goes, uh, that one of Dank's something uh, infiltrated a gathering of a bunch of Seems to be wealthy nobles. One of them was showing off a uh, airship or so, or, or plans for one, and um, terribly played a piano to make it sound like a violin. And they were so appalled at the end of the story, they found out that he, this person was not um, someone to basically that they ordered from and took all of the money. They'd since captured him for trespassing, terribly playing the instrument, and also eating all the pancakes in the storage, so <gasps> theft. Um, that seems excessive to kill someone over something like that. Oh, noblemen love a good vengeance. But the, the other two, they've actually uh, allegedly harmed others. What about the big sobbing one over there? Do we have time to go over his papers? Absolutely, and he'll switch over, <laughs> go over. I like how it switched from like, Dark fantasy adventure to papers, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My tummy hurt. <laughs> Tonkus um, apparently is a merchant who helps the Delvers Guild. Um, apparently, as he he decided to go on a rampage in each portable people by several reports from the Tyrants Guild. They have pursued this individual, captured him, interrogated him to to admission, and have now brought him here for justice. The tyrant skilled are the only ones who have provided evidence or, or witness. They're, they're the only witness reports. It says here on the reports, yes. Only the tyrant skilled probably did no such thing. They're probably, well, this is more than blackmail at this point. <gasps> he looks down at his hands, they're sweaty. He looks across <laughs> to, to the, the gang. I, if, if any of them, I, oh, I, do, do none of you care? Talib will actually, like, look back and beat on the do none of you care, and, um, uh, we'll look down at Beetle and be like, we cannot save every innocent Beetle. We try our best, but at the end of the day, we are still... Despite our lifespans or what we've accomplished, just people, not the gods, 
and even the gods have less of us. Beal clenches his jaw, and he stares hard at him for a moment. His pupils straight up come, like, around so that he's, he's front-facing, looking at Talim. They're not wall-eyed, they, like, slide around to look at him. And, uh, he goes, Will we all still be okay if I take a card? The decision is yours, but I have made mine. Beal looks at Grey, who's been very quiet. Because her player is having cho choice paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> her player's tummy is really hurting right now. Uh, <laughs> because, like, in her mind, it, this feels very suspicious that Chalkis is getting uh, basically put out here when only the Tyrant's Guild has said anything. Yeah. But also, it wouldn't be out of the norm for some weird shit like this to happen. She's been here long enough for weird shit to happen. So she's just like sitting here going like, I don't know. Man, if only if you could quick save and load and Baldur's Gate or whatever. Like, quick save, oh, quick man. save, quick save! <laughs> Hart turns around and looks at Beetle. Beetle, according to me, two of these people should not be up there. I know. One person has just eaten five people. Uh. One person snuck into a place. Punctuate your statement. Oh. You see a tongue oh, look and it's just munching on someone. Now it's six. They've oh my they grabbed God. someone from the crowd. He like grabs up the executioner. They're getting a new right. executioner. <laughs> the the fact is, the fact is that one the one only person that should go away for this is the frog. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Right. Why would the prince even give Ferdinand? Isn't this your pardon? Isn't it your pardon to give? He looks down. He looks to you, going, "Like it's yours now." You're sure you want us to use it right now here? He looks over to the distance, and you hear, and you hear just, "It's like." And, and now the executions will soon Wait. begin. Wait. And, he, and, he, and he looks over, going, and he motions in his hands to the cards. Beetle grabs up the card for the ogre and the card for the cat boy. Aren't they flipped over? We can't see which. They one. have the initials on they them, have don't the they? Initials. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yeah. So each. So as as he explained. Uh, each card has the initials of each of them. So one represents one, represents one, but they're all face down, and you don't know which one's which. <gasps> but oh, Beetle... you don't know. They're face down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm sorry Beetle... if I missed that detail. That's but sorry, Beetle it's okay. I might have misunderstood. That's right. Beetle... I am an investigator. Are you going <laughs> to check the cards for can marks? I, can I check the cards for marks really quick? I can roll with disadvantage since I'm being rushed. Well, there's no, there's no disadvantage, there's misfortune, Path Fighter 2 but uh, roll me a perception check. Yeah, if there's like anywhere, anywhere, or any kind of bleed I can find. Okay, perception. Okay, that's a total of 22. Uh, I'd like to hero point it. Okay. <laughs> good. Oh, please, God. Total of 31! Never mind. Apparently my bitbars thing crashed. I gotta talk to Snowsy about that. Oh no! Uh, oh sorry no. about that, chat. Um, so I'll just say that you went down one or so. We'll just mentally keep that capped. So with a 31, because you're trying... Your, so I have to be really specific on this one because you did not do this when he was placing them down. Yeah. Uh, so you're not able to get an amazing thing for this or so um from from the placement of the cards from reading everything from doing the sherlock holmes thing of going what if he did this and then he discombobulated this way this way he would put the murderer here because then, he would think that i would take this one over here and from my photographic <laughs> memory and from my photographic memory when this is in this way you know this, ca I, this card is slightly bent by the corner i will I yeah. you know. this direction a bird flew overhead <laughs> I will let you know. So, hmm. How can I give you this information that's going to fuck everything up? Hmm. Because <laughs> it's like, 
So I'm trying to give you something, but I'm yeah. trying to reach out of nothing for you for yeah, your role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's really, really hard. And if I give you a blatant answer, it's kind of hard. There's I'm gonna no, give you a clue. There's no, like, you know when you press down on paper and you flip it over, like after you've written, you can see a faint look. Oh, the indentation? Yeah, the indent where the page is raised from where you wrote it. Is there any of that? Is there any bleed through of ink anywhere on any page that is faintly in the shape of like a C or any letter? That is... <laughs> Once more, that's so much an information. H? Is Let's there an see. H? Mm. Does one card have an H on it? I'm going to give you a, a clue, which might okay. wreck your brain a bit way okay. too much. Okay, okay, oh, okay. No. You see... Uh, this is going to be good. <laughs> you see <laughs> one of the cards is slightly up. Maybe it's just due to the wrinkle of like a tablecloth or a bit of the wood lifted up just a bit and you have some photographic memory of slightly seeing it because he didn't put it down as gracefully as, as he should have you notice one of the cards you didn't see the initials unfortunately but the cards is a slightly a bit tipped up or so or a little bit bent up and you notice that it's an ace oh fuck oh they're straight up fucking playing cards okay oh <laughs> like, oh, he's yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get that kettle. <laughs> Dev, I'm slapping the kettle with a sausage. Stop it. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Uh, what suit? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Wait, what does that mean? What did you mean? Well, like this, Jack or heart or like, like oh. Ace of Diamonds, stuff like that. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard to give you all the information because if I give you way too much, you just basically know exactly who's who. So it's yeah. like, hmm. Okay, so three cards, one I pardon. Know. I don't know a lot about playing cards out of character, so I'm like, I don't. Know I don't either. I mean. There's a, there's a thing. They think of one through ten, and then there's the Jack. King and Queen, and then the Ace. Yeah. Um, ace is like to, to help to help you out here because you're raw. I'll give this information to you. There's a term called Ace in the Hole, uh -huh. uh, and Ace is a very high valued card. And so your mental game has to come into is like he Curtinan from what you're investigating with and everyone's a perception check. He is scoping you out to see if you will choose to to preserve life or not to yes. conserve. You know, yeah. and from this, no matter what the stakes or consequences are, will you conserve life? Yeah. And like, regardless of what it is, what will you pursue? Um, and from the card or so, you understand that like, he obviously knows which one's which, and the yeah. ace is something to potentially trip you up to be something that is the best case or the worst case. That is what your investigator Ooh. mind comes together with. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry to assume and take control of your character's thoughts, but that's just to help you through No, this. that helps me a lot because I didn't know that like the ace was the best card. So when you were like, it's an ace, I was like, I don't know what that yeah, fucking you, means. See, I, I thought you needed more <laughs> playing cards. That's just to help you along. So my bad. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, best or worst. Uh, Curtin and doesn't perceive any of these as more or no wait he would perceive the one that didn't take any lives as most valuable then yeah so even even no matter what kind of weird backward bullshit like oh this guy could have been could have been just set up but we don't know so at face value the cat boy would be at the one to value, go with well I think I think Chungus and cat boy are both innocent but well yeah but that's not the but, point. Yeah, that's not the point. And this I is... don't feel like Curtinand would want to trip us up. These are the slowest three seconds. Yes! <laughs> I'm a nice game after sure, a while. Time. And I have them all dead <laughs> yeah, by the time yeah, yeah. Decision. They're dead okay. already. Th this okay. is Beetle literally doing the anime protagonist Everything mind is slowed scape. down and yeah. it's just like, it's the Sherlock Holmes fight. Okay, he's going to take the... 
the, the card that he sussed out to be an ace, he will take that one. I'm gonna die. He's committing. He's doing it. Are you sure? You'll be fine. Yes. I hate when you do that. I hate when you do that. Yes, when the executioner gets up and he he starts, Beetle, frantically, his pupils snap back to being wall-eyed. He scrambles onto the table and grabs the ace and screams, wait! (laughs) Hernan will lean forward, look at the card, and go, very interesting choice. And he will take the, gonna... he'll take the card, and he'll uh, take the envelope, and he'll pat and he'll basically lift his hand up, and you will notice this slight cherub orb crystal looking thing will snatch it and then fly off, fly off on the balcony and zoom down to the platform. As it zooms <laughs> down to the platform, you'll see one of the executioners getting ready with an axe. Just tomb, 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 heading straight to the cat boy first. The axe begins to lift up, and you see uh, this cherub land to one of the people, hand over the letter. You see the person begin to read it. The axe begins to lift higher and ho- higher up into, onto the hands, all the, way at, all the way to the pinnacle to be swung down. And you just see the person with the letter dash going through the crowd, but he seems to be struggling a bit. Closer he gets, the axe begins to weave back a little bit more, and you hear, wait! Tap, 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 tap. As you hear the tipping taps and everything, everyone goes silent. It's like, a pardon! A pardon from the assembly, hold! And you see they'll read through it. They will nod. They'll close it down and they will walk to Chonkus and release Chonkus. And you'll see the crowd just start booing a boo, boo, and starts throwing things or so as Chonkus kind of looks at his shackles are now removed and looks around go, am, am I free? Am, stop that, stop uh, booing him, stop throwing things at him, stop! Am I free to go? And it's like, Chonkus the fourth has been pardoned by the assembly and by the gracious things, by the by the gracious vote, and by the grace of the prince in the, in the assembly, they are now free, and all charges are dropped and fully pardoned. <laughs> Boo! They start throwing more stuff. They wanted a show. Yeah. You know, yeah. they wanted to see death and mayhem, and they throw things at Chonk. Because of course they escort him off or so. And, Easy uh, to blame the ogre. Yeah, and, and as they yeah. close everything. <laughs> Continue the executions! And then boom, ah. da, 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 and you see the cat boy give a wink to you all. Ah. The cat boy uh, head drops, and but the head still holds a smirk. And Whoa. as for the frog, the frog goes, I'll, do, I'll, I'll come back for all of you. I'll eat every single one of you. And the frog gets executed as well. And Curdenan and uh, and Froggy um, for for Beetle, you'll see that Curdenan will flip over the other cards, and true to his word, they were all of the different initials. The deck was not the deck was not stacked, um, and he will clap. He'll go. Lean will look over at Hart and kind of like tilt his head and like raise an eyebrow. He's like, huh. <laughs> Beetle immediately uh-huh. looks to his party while her dad is clapping, and he's like, "I I had to do something. I'm so sorry. I I can't. I had to do something. We're still all okay, right? We're still all okay." Green yeah, gives I a tr- thumbs up, but she looks like she's gonna puke. <laughs> <laughs> I trusted you the entire time, buddy. You're the okay. smartest person I know. Okay. Talim will actually go to put a hand on Beetle, like lean down and put a hand on Beetle's shoulder. It's like. I have many of my own faults. I will not ask that you bear their burden, Beetle. You do what you must. I didn't like that. (laughs) Her hand will will come up to you, Beetle. And he'll kind of, he'll kneel down and try to put a, or try to comfort you in some way and go, Sir Beetle, 
it is never easy. We all have to make decisions and sacrifices to do our very best to preserve life. But here at the Conservance, we do our very best to ensure that those can still serve and those can still help even their families. You know the utensil that you use to eat today? Uh, yes. There are families at Edmari, families who live in the Kingdom of Dern, who, ha- who unfortunately have some of the family members begin to pass from this world to go great beyond. We believe that they can still serve their country, their family, their loved ones. Some of us, and he'll kind of motion to some of the servants, are able to hold on to their souls and we're able to help them. But there are others, and he'll procure one of the utensils and point to the stone, help us in even some of the littlest ways. Here. This was somebody who lived in a village, and he'll hand you a fork, ah! and he'll fork, and he'll tap on, he'll tap on the stone. Did not get to experience life for long, maybe only 17, 18 years, but they lived life to the fullest until a terrible disease took them. We did our very best to preserve them, to, to conserve them, but they agreed to serve. And so as much as it's in a small way, we treasure them. And they help. So take care of this one. To understand Ah! that you have conserved life. I'm sure it'll be a great use to you. Oh, this is a lot of responsibility. (laughs) He closes his hands around the fork and he feels like he's just been handed a baby. (laughs) He feels like he's in high school again. His 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 teacher just gave him a sack of flour. Yeah, he gave him the sack of flour. We're like, worse. Yeah, worse. It's a fucking egg so it could break. And he's just like holding it so carefully. He's like, oh, okay. He agreed to be a fork. He wanted to be a fork! Those very souls that go into various of these objects, they are dormant. It's not like a person oh. is actively seeing you put food in your mouth. Oh, thank goodness. But they serve <laughs> in various ways, and he'll take the stone out and take back the fork and put it in your hand. Oh. And so, may, thank you. may he help serve you. Thank you, I'll take very good care of him. He'll nod, he will stand and look to you, Talim, and go, allow me to help you. And I'll help out. You said you had someone who was sick. Yes. Talia. I can't so. You'll add that to the agreement. As long as you agree to the tasks I wish for you to do, is to find an object (laughs) deep underneath the city of Outset to delve and find an artifact for me. Mm. Similar qualities of one of the condition that you have told me. It seems we're already proficient at finding such things. So I believe you have the right people for the job. He will nod and he'll ask the, he'll motion his hand out for you to grab onto his hand as if you are shaking his hand. Tell him we'll go to shake her name's hand almost as if you know like sealing the deal yeah you're here like dum bum 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 <laughs> are you ready are you ready, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> and he grabs your hand and I would like to be a whole bunch of it, but seriously you feel elated you feel elated you feel power surge into you um oh. <laughs> and you feel Curdenan basically kind of like grabbing on to like something else in his pocket or so and Beetle, if you roll me a perception check, anybody else wants me to, to see what he's yes. maybe holding. Um, yeah. Woohoo! Oh my Those goodness, two 19s. Two 19s! Uh, total of 31, though. And 29. So, so above your perception, that is an e- both excellent rolls. You notice that he is grabbing on to yet another crystal, draining one to surge through this power. 
to help Talim. And Talim, you are no longer Rotten One. <gasps> Yay! Let's go! You got a good nap. You feel pretty good. <laughs> Finally, some good fucking sleep. <laughs> it's like when it's like when you drink water the first time you do after waking up. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, uh, he will then come like he'll then kind of sit over at the table and go, "This is what I am asking for you all." Recently, there's been a local gang that I have commissioned to help acquire a key. Um, they have since acquired that key, but they have since fallen out of contact with me. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They are called the called Crocs Gang here in the ponds, over at the Ponds Palasta. We know them. Very familiar. Yeah, we're familiar. I wish for you to investigate them and acquire the key that they were sent out to acquire. And I wish for you to bring it back to me or to have this Cox gang remember the agreement that I have established with them, that I offer them a large sum of gold for this item. They have since not gotten back to me. In fact, they have ignored all messages and even detained some of them. Oh. Um, I would request for you to investigate to see what is going on before we take action. Absolutely. Once you have acquired, uh, once you've acquired the key or got the cooperation of the gang, you are to delve deep into the city of Outset in search for the artifact. I will give you more details once you've acquired the key or the gang member's cooperation. <laughs> Gray kind of like slumps in on herself a little bit. Like she's just like, oh. <laughs> I love the tunnels. I love the tunnels. <laughs> okay, we'll go get that key for you. Or get Crocs Gang to bring you the key. Gray and I will look to the rest of you, making sure you all agree. Gray gives a thumbs up for the very, it's very shaky thumbs up. She's like still getting over her tummy problems there. <laughs> Heart, <laughs> heart, heart, oh, go ahead. Uh, heart cleans his hands and puts down the empty uh, fruit tray onto the table. Yeah, um, we might not be able to preserve as much life uh, when we do this. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, Crocs gang, all that. We probably won't what? go in there and preserve them. We can attempt to, but they we're might fine. not be so willing. Oh, we're fine with Crocs gang. We just took Brug from them. What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, but they, pro they don't know that we hired Brug out from under them, and we can be cordial. We're not going to go in and beat them up. What it was, what's Hopefully. wrong with you? What's I'm wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Curtin. We might have to kill someone. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. Might. That's it. Self defense. <laughs> Yes, we're good for it. <laughs> Christ. He nods and says that we are in agreement. Um, like, before we leave, yes. what was the fork's name? <laughs> Dad, what's the fork's fucking name? <laughs> I gotta do this to me. I have the bullshit names of the fly. Like, <laughs> yeah, what's the fork's name? Dave. 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 Devaniel. You, you, you gotta answer. You gotta answer in his voice. It's. <laughs> I like the name Forrick. Forrick? Okay. His name is Forrick. Wow. It's like destiny. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Well, we'll, we we'll seek, do. Um, uh, he'll hand over a bottle to you all and say, I believe my contacts have gotten the scoop on that already. And this to Brug. 
Thank oh. you. The fact you already knew. Whoa. If, the, if, if you could over. see the skull in his crystal smile, he would have smiled at you, Gray. And he will uh, motion to the door and go, Thank you for coming. He takes it. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, before, also before we go, last minute thought. Uh, it's a, it's a bit of a request. So if you want to add on, like, a, oh, can you pick up some bread for me uh, at the <laughs> store? Or, you know, wait, never mind. You, that's not condensed at Mari. Never mind. Um, the Tyrant Skill doesn't like this very much. Would you be able to put in a good word, maybe? I'll see what I can do. Thank they have you. been relatively a thorn in our side whenever we try to do anything ever. They always show up and then they attack us. Uh, <laughs> and then I... now they don't like us because we defended ourselves. Unfortunately, I do not run the political system here in Outset, but I will see what our diplomats can do. Thank, oh, you. thank you. It would be great if we could just go do these errands for you without them shooting at us all the time. Thank you. <laughs> he will not. I don't mind it. He'll nod, and several soldiers will come to escort you out. Talim will, as he passes by, bow and uh, be like, Thank you, Icon, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see you later! The High Conserve wishes you well. Stay safe, May your stay life healthy. continue to be conserved, and I will be here, waiting for good news. And with that, that is where we're going to end it today. I can't believe he smiled at me. <laughs> he smiled at you. He smiled oh, at your you character, man. Spindly metal monster. <laughs> and oh. and you're gonna separate yourself from your character. I can smell I said it in character. <laughs> no, yeah, Gray is allowed to be like, oh, Christ, we're responsible for other lives now. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my I, God, my tubby. It makes sense. No, it completely makes sense for Gray to be yeah. like, ah, over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time for that. Yeah. More, more, more along the lines of uh, it, when Kurdan looks at someone, Min in the background goes, yeah. Goes what? You went quiet. Went quiet. Okay, yeah. you, you go. You breaking the sound barrier over there? Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't know yeah, what you're saying. It. Yeah, you just it. die. Okay, I, yeah. Uh, okay. You you make squeak noise. You <laughs> know, <laughs> 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 yeah, something like that. So with that, thank you all so much, chat, for coming over and watching us live. And so, hoping you appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, listening to us on podcast. Um, which you can always find in the video descriptions on YouTube and stuff down below or on our website for the links for that at narrativedeclaration.com. If you enjoyed everything, I, I'm going to have to sit down and write a long lore document for all the Patreon folks to kind of catch everybody up on Atmar and stuff. I've just been horribly busy. So mm. <laughs> that's why Thurston, <laughs> Thurston and in uh, Two Tales Stories, uh, and so like they have been uh, really kind of helping up on the PDF front because I'm like, I got so much other crap to manage and work on. I'm so sorry. Um, so hopefully one day I can sit down and get that written out for everybody so people understand what these weird things are, um, which you can always find other PDFs in uh, stat blocks and all sorts of stuff over at patreon.com forward slash narrative declaration. If you really want to help out the show that way, you get early access to the VODs before they go live on YouTube. But of course, if you are subbed on Twitch, you can just watch the Twitch VOD as well, or you can wait a week and the VODs uh, for each episode comes out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash narrative declaration. And of course, join our Discord and stuff, discord.gd forward slash narrative declaration, and of course, social media, all that other stuff, everything narrative declaration, as much as we can get it to you. Website will have everything relevant for you as well as our Discord. So I want to re thank everybody. Thank you so much, Minerva, for coming over and playing great for me. Thank you. I had a good time. I was like, where, they, where can they find you? You can find me over at Party Demoness on all of my socials. Uh, like I said before, I'm a giant problem, and you can join me by being a problem by hanging out with me. And next up, we have our caffeinated cult leader, Cabal. Hello. You can find me on Twitch, uh, Twitter. I'm not going to call it X. It's a stupid name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Everywhere just by searching Cabal. Um, yeah. And I'm looking forward to the next game. And next up, we have our resident little guy and squeaker, Foggy Luck. My heart is slamming. Oh, my God. That was so good. 
<laughs> uh, you can find me anywhere under my name, Froggy Lock. That's just what I am absolutely freaking everywhere. Uh, thank you so much for this session today, Sarge. <laughs> No problem. Wait, Thank what is you the for fork giving me like? an ulcer? <laughs> what does the fork look like? Does it look like a like a regular fork, or does it look like it's a kind of see through milky fork? It's, it's like a, very, a guy named David. It's a very <laughs> fancy looking fork with a uh, embedded stone in it, but the stone's taken out. You just have a really beautiful looking fork. Okay. And of course, we have our talented and amazing salty job. I can't believe that Froggy wields a person as a plus one weapon. No! Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, my name is Salted Job. I draw funny. You can find me at Salted Job on Twitter. Uh, you can also find some of my work here on the Narrative Declaration channel, uh, as well as multiple other places. I'm gonna shill cabal uh, dot store uh, uh, dot store where <gasps> you can right. see some cool merch that I have been doing. Uh, that is until the end of September. 2023 yeah. and cabal like just released this version honestly it's it's like so beautiful salty did such a good job on That's it super it awesome. looks we got so some cool cabal merch. yeah Go get it giant robots it looks yeah. really good hilariously, yeah. hilariously i was like the first person to actually put it in order before the you didn't wait for this <laughs> order to open I you didn't wait for me to make the announcement <laughs> oh, I, I was like give <laughs> sorry explain jokes about the yeah. discord link not working we'll get that fixed uh, yes. so much i'll try to if you wait during the credits i'll try to get the new link to you but thank you all so yeah. much chat so much for watching oh. new link sorry give it like, to me he's like, i would love to but discord broke the fucking links again give anyway, me the link. hands. Hands. Chat, i love you very much everyone we're love you very much we're gonna head out give, here give us the link thank you all we'll so very much we'll see you next time so long farewell we'll see you next we episode appreciate you, champ.